What's going on, everybody? This is Justin in Rochester with Purple and Gold for Days. I have my compatriot, Mike Castanino from Mike Up Podcast, and our special guest, Kyle Smith from the Purple People Podcast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'll start with our guest, Mike. Kyle, how are you doing this evening? You know what? Fashionably late, but I appreciate you boys for having me. <laughs> I've been excited about this since we've been talking about it for a little while. And I like that we have news to talk with, too, not just yeah. us being like, We'll take that guy. Yes, exactly. So I've got it on the, uh, on the ticket there. So that's Purple and Go for Days. And again, Purple People Podcast. Check my guy Kyle along with Adam and the other Kyle. Although uh, it's amazing how, hey, the other Kyle will get that one on there. But by the way, we are also simulcasting tonight on Purple People Podcast. So if any of your audience has notification set, they'll see it here. So. The more the merrier. Mike, my good friend, the king of Vikings Twitter spaces, how are you this evening? I'm pretty good, Justin. No complaints. Hey, drops 10 days away. Nice. It'll be fun. Indeed it is. So with all that said, we are going to do some mockage here tonight. But first off, let's give some shout outs. Skull Mafia is already in the building. Thank you kindly. Skull Purple Gang in the building. You know we trading up. Yeah, we'll probably do at least one, if not two. What's funny about it is earlier I was live with SK and Rap and promoted uh, Rap Show later tonight and Gigi. And, um, yeah, they might not be going on. So we're going to take longer than I had expected to. I try not to bump heads with uh, our fellow content creators. But since they ain't going, we got more time. But having said that, yes, we got some news. We got this Dalvin Cook situation. We got this now Daniil Hunter situation, all of which we've kind of pretty much known anyway. So let's start with Daniil Hunter since that's the topic of the day. Uh, didn't show up for voluntary today. Not really surprised. The guy's got a $13 million cap hit, but he's only getting $4.9 million in cash this season. Daniil Hunter has taken plenty of team-friendly deals over the course of his Vikings tenure. And being that this is the last year of his deal at only $4.9 million, I can't say I really blame him. I'll start with you, Kyle. What do you make of this Daniil Hunter situation, and how are we going to rectify it? You go one of two or three different ways. Um, you could try to rectify it and pay him more because he has taken team friendly deals. I think when you have a situation with a player like this who's had a tweak, love that reference. <laughs> um, yeah, you want to see him come back healthy. And for everything great that Zadarius Smith was for the first half of the year, Daniel Hunter was for the rest of the year. If you look at pro football focus grades and you don't have to live and die by those, they were a top two tandem in the, the league last year. Top 10, I believe they both fell in there. I don't see Daniil Hunter being as successful in the 3-4 as he was just putting his knuckles in the ground, but he's a hell of an athlete. He's still young. I want him to stay more than I want Sedaris to stay. So I, I would try to work that out. Um, but also, out of the three that we're going to talk about here, I think he's the one with the biggest upside for trade potential because he's not as old as the other two. He doesn't have the extent of injury history. They all have injury history, but mm. I like Daniil the most. I would like him to stay out of the three that we had mentioned just now. But that's just my thing. If you move him, I don't care because I've got it ready in here for a couple of places that I've looked at. I got a replacement for him on the way when we talk about this uh, mock draft. So, Mike, what are your thoughts on this? What are we doing? Are we keeping him? Are we going to give him his money? Are we going to try to trade him next Thursday as School Mafia thinks? What are you thinking? Yeah, I, I think it comes down to two things. I don't think they're going to come to a long-term extension, as I talked about earlier. We know – Quessy has an age range that he likes to keep these players around. Mm -hmm. They're not going to give him a four-year extension, paying him like $20 million until he's like 32. That's not going to happen. That's all of the cards. So it's either going to be a restructured deal 
similar to what Harrison Smith did, where it's basically they give him an upgrade in pay. Well, in this case for Hunter, it'll be an upgrade in pay, unlike Harry, where it was a pay cut. But he gets to hit free agency next year and that and the story, and he gets more money. I think everyone wins. It's essentially like a franchise tag. Um, or he's traded. I don't think there's any in-between here. He's obviously not going to play for $4.9 million. And why would he? That's insanity if he tried to do that because – Talk about team friendly. That that's honestly like almost like a rookie deal at that point. So that's not going to happen. Right. Um, it makes all the sense in the world that he's holding out. I'm not mildly surprised about it. We just see where it goes from here. I honestly, if you're going to trade him, you got to get at least a second round pick or throw him in a package to move up high in the draft in the first round. There's no in between for me. No, I totally agree. And forgive me, guys. I'm hitting the tweet button here right now to get uh, get this notification set out over the Twitter air rave. So <clears throat> give me just a second there, but. I'm going to say it like this. I would love to see Daniil Hunter back on this team. <clears throat> I'd love to see him be utilized by Flores the way that Ed Donichel didn't. I want to see him with his hand in the dirt. I want to see him not dropping into coverage, but maybe once a season, if that, okay? Yeah. Yep. Maybe twice. Not once or twice a quarter, but I digress. The point I'm making is this. It is a sticky situation because, again, he's counting $13 million against the cap. If he is traded or cut, and it doesn't matter if it's – pre-June, post-June, doesn't matter. All of his dead cap hit will accelerate to where his cap hit for him not being here will be $18 million, which means you're going to go $5 million in the wrong direction if you try to trade or, or, or cut him outright. They're not going to cut him outright. I'll tell you that right now. They will go through all summer and have him hold out before they cut him for absolutely nothing. Now, I might be wrong on the post-June 1st designation if he's uh, traded or cut, but it's not really the, – the point is this. You've got to get something in return for him. you got to get a second-round pick for him at minimum, or he needs to be part of a package where, you know, let's say, hypothetically speaking, I don't know, you decide you want to trade up for one of the top-tier quarterbacks and, okay, you got to throw in one, two, maybe a third first-round pick, an additional player, and Daniil Hunter can bring you that added value that way. Well, yeah, then I'm okay taking the extra $5 million that you've already allocated plus $5 million more. But you want to bring the guy back? Okay, so he's taking team-friendly deals like we talked about. In 2018, he signed an extension, and he signed an extension early, and it was a sweetheart of a deal for the Vikings. They signed him to a $40 million extension to, because Rick Spielman's like, I'm going to get out ahead of this. And now he accepted that deal, so he has to bear some of that responsibility. And – you know, he was going to renegotiate here and then he got hurt and then he was going to renegotiate here and then he got hurt again. At the end of the day, he's in a bad spot. He does not deserve to only be playing out the final year of his deal for four point nine million. He's a definitely a top 10 pass rusher. So how they're going to figure this one out is beyond me. Like I said, I want him back. I'd love to see him as part of the Flores defense. But, you know, if, if you can get something for him, you almost have to take it, don't you? Well, I, it depends on what it is, right? As you, if it's what you said, like bare minimum, like a second, fine. But mm -hmm. it, it it's a really sticky situation because I'm not so sure. As much as we, you know, want to think that the Vikings could get a second round pick, I'm not so sure the NFL team is going to give that up for it because they understand the third. leverage. I think it's a third, and a third is reasonable. He was a third round pick. He has injury history, but right. he he did get to 50 sacks super fast as a young yeah. player. And he's shown he bounced back from not only a neck thing, but uh, what was it, a bicep or a pec tear? Yeah, a pec tear, yeah. And, pec yeah, he can yeah. do that. Also, if you guys want, I have some juicy speculation. We are not uh, published media, and we don't have credentials. so Oh, no, we guys... love rec – we live the reckless speculation lifestyle. Absolutely. Well, here's a fun thing I got from our boy Kyle West with me on the Purple People podcast today. And he said, take this with a grain of salt, so there's your disclaimer. But this is on a Reddit. <laughs> And it says, my cousin has dated Daniil a couple of times. She says that when he was hurt, he talked about how he didn't really care because he got paid, which is good. I love that. Said that his football is his job. His true passion is cars. Now, we know that's true because mm. we've seen it all over his social media. He's in Dubai and all these other places with these crazy automobiles. It says, um, when I heard that come out of his mouth, I knew he'd never be as good as we thought he would be. Imagine if he actually cared about it. But don't get me wrong. The dude is a beast. Now. I know that has a little to nothing to do with a GMing an armchair quarterback in here, but right. I thought that was funny. And I was like, I don't see, I see part of that being absolutely true. Don't know if it could be fully true, but point being, yeah, he got his money when he was hurt. You should get paid if you get injured on the job, just like if you worked in a steel mill or something like that. 
But I, to Mike's point, I think that a third is is fair. I don't think a second would come our way because he's not some monumental player. He's a little bit older. But mm-hmm. guess what another third does for the Vikings? That gives you leverage to move right into the second that you use for TJ Hawkinson. Exactly. It's totally a win-win agree. for us. You can have a first, second, third, and then you could be good to go and not miss out, um, assuming you stay put at 23. But I, I do want to throw one last thing quickly. If we did make the big trade up, it is kind of funny how – Jonathan Gannon is the head coach of the Cardinals now, and this is a really, really long-term connection all the way back, you know, many, many years ago. But he used to be part of the Vikings staff under Zimmer mm-hmm. when the new hunter came in. So there is a connection there, and he did like a tweet when um, Gannon got the Cardinals head coaching job. But the one nice thing about Hunter compared to Kirk, who has been, you know, obviously speculated before in the past, there is no, you know, there is no trade, no trade clause. So. You could trade him anywhere. Any team that wanted him, you could move him to. So we'll see what happens. I Honestly, though, I love to see him back. I'm not so sure he will be. And I don't know, Justin, you guys could tell me if I'm wrong on this. Did Z show up to voluntary, you know, OTAs? Because if he did, that's pretty telling. Because I didn't hear about his name. I heard about Delvin. I heard about Daniel, But I didn't hear anything about Z. You know, I didn't hear one way or the other. But, you know... Uh, a lot of the focus was on Daniel Hunter because, well, he's a longer-term player, and yeah, and obviously, I, I actually haven't had a chance to keep up with the news the rest of the day because I did the uh, the live show uh, at noon with SK and Rap. So I'll, I'll take a look. But you're right; no, I didn't hear one way or the other. Uh, what about you, Kyle? Did you hear anything? I didn't. My assumption is not, since it's voluntary, and the coaches have been really adamant about these guys don't have to show up for that. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw who did give a a press conference today, so my assuming him not being there would be he would be a part of the media thing because they were going to hound him about this stuff if he was there. But I don't know. I haven't heard yes or no. I'm assuming that he wasn't. I'm going to take a see if I can quickly uh, find out uh, from the old Twitter machine here. But while we are waiting on that, I do want to say shout out to everybody that's up in the building that just came through the door. Dylan, thanks, Kylie. Good to see you again. What's good? Hey, you know what? We are less than two weeks away. We are a week and a half from draft night. Uh, what's going on, GG Sports? Thanks for dropping in for us as well. Um, hit those like buttons on the way in. And I, I do see a couple of people had come through uh, on your YouTube page as well. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. We are a very, very guest-intensive and fan-friendly uh, podcast here. So light up that chat for us. Put anything you want in there. Keep it clean. We uh, you know, occasionally have a couple of kids watching this. Single greatest Twitter handle, Facebook handle of all time. My worthless opinion. Thanks for swinging on through. Good to see you here as well. Uh, We're going to do some mocks later here. We all know that. But uh, let's circle back to the news of the day. And this really isn't news of the day, but, you know, some reports came out this weekend talking about Dalvin Cook. And, of course, Dalvin Cook's agent had to go start running his mouth about how the Vikings have totally misused him uh, and they've been mediocre his entire time here. Um, Last I checked, we've gone to the playoffs three times and twice – We've gotten out of the first round. And one of those times, your player wasn't even playing. In fact, the best year we've had since you've been here is the year you weren't playing. Now, obviously, different circumstances and things change. We all know that. But, Mike, I'll start with you. This Dalvin Cook situation, I think uh, a topic we had talked about earlier was, you know, do we like that Quasi is being patient and patience is a virtue and waiting around here? And I said, if you end up getting something good for him, then yes, fine. But if you end up missing out and getting absolutely nothing for Dalvin Cook because every other team has said, you know what, we're not willing to give you anything, and the Vikings end up cutting him for nothing, then patience didn't do you a whole lot of good. But uh, your thoughts on this Dalvin Cook mess and how are we going to get through it? You, you basically read my mind there, Justin. I, I don't have much else to add other than, yeah, they better not – Release him. Because if you do that, you fail. I don't mm-hmm. care. I don't want to hear it. If you get nothing for a multiple-time Pro Bowl running back, you failed. Because this is what I don't think enough people realize. Well, his contract's very, you know, difficult to trade. No, it's not. The team that acquired him would be acquiring him would only be paying him a little bit over $6 million. So, and I did the math. He's That would be put in between 12th and 13th highest paid running back for the mm-hmm. team that's paying him on the cap. So, Right. It's doable. The Vikings just better not get cute here because then the if they have an offer on the table right now, they honestly should take it. Yes. Because with running backs, you're lucky if you get anything. Look what happened with Zeke. He got cut by the Cowboys. Should have traded him earlier. They didn't. They gave him the extension. When you give running backs these massive extensions, it almost never works out. 
the Panthers are one of the only teams that got a ton when they traded McCaffrey to the Niners because it was cheap for the Niners acquiring him. Dalvin Cook's not $2 million for the team acquiring me six. So if they have a fifth round pick on the table, take mm. it, move on. Don't yes. get too cute. I agree. I agree. Uh, for the record, it's $7.9 million for a team that trades him on this year's cap hit, but close enough. It's not the $14 it's, million that the Vikings wh- are on the Whatever it is, yeah, it, yeah. You know, it's not worth overthinking it. That, that's all, because there's definitely a team that would be worth paying him. Yeah, no, I agree. I'll say this. You're either going to trade him, even if it's for a fifth-round pick, you're either going to cut him, or he's going to be back on the team. Mm-hmm. And anything other than trading him is a failure, as you said yeah. there. But, uh, Kyle, your thoughts? The number is what I, I cling to when we hear this information. So 7.9. It's right around what you're giving Alexander Madison. If it's last year for Dalvin, I'm good with, I'm good with him coming back. But, yeah, like you guys said, you have to get something. You don't want to be empty-handed because not only are you going to lose your starting running back, which we're prepared to replace in Alexander Madison, but the money, eh, funny money, monopoly money, whatever, that's the cap. I'm, I'm not worried about that part. But – you need to do it before the draft so you have a clear path of what your vision is because you can get a great running back in the fifth round. Mm-hmm. And I'm not too worried. I'm not saying they're going to replace the production of Dalvin, but that's not the identity of the team anymore. That's the one thing that I really laugh about with this agent is saying he's got, he's a Hall of Fame running back. Um, hold on on that for a little while, my guy. <laughs> and, I, and I love Dalvin to death. I have his jersey. Yeah, so did away I. From me so on the wall. I yeah. But it's, it's just hold off on that a little bit and – the other point is, too, I have seen nothing in the way of Ty Chandler or Kine Wangwu on the field, and I would like to see what that investment is. Yeah. So do what you can. He can go somewhere that's running back needy. I don't think that's a terrible deal for anyone because we would absorb some of that money, I believe. But, yeah, you guys nailed it. You got to get something for him, even if it's pennies. If you come out with nothing, man, you fumbled that one, and you don't want to start your second year with a fumble as far as your management. <laughs> no and pun that- intended, right? Sorry, okay. I'll make this quick. And, and I got in an argument with somebody over Twitter about this. And I was telling someone, well, like, they should take a seventh if that's what they have offered to them. And someone told me that they should literally cut him instead of trading him for a seventh. That might have been the craziest thing I've ever heard. Like, take anything. You get anything that's a draft pick, you take it and move on. You know, I've got a car that's a, that I'm just going to take to the junkyard. Uh, the junkyard guy offered me 100 bucks for it. No. Just take it. I don't even want your hundred bucks. Really? What kind of nonsense is that? Shout out, Davey Chains. What's up? Thanks for coming into the building, Davey. I appreciate you. Hit those like buttons as on your way in, ladies and gentlemen. And also, uh, please consider subscribing to our guest here tonight, and that is Kyle. And that handle of his is NC Dog Dude. Tell us the origin of your your handle, NC Dog Dude, Kyle. We got to hear this. Man, you. I was just going to change it to pr- promote the channel, but it's scrolling at the bottom. I do pr- uh, Vikings podcast, too, with a few of my great friends. Adam Carlson and Kyle West, Purple People Podcast. Like it, subscribe it if you'd like. We do stuff here. We're going to do uh, our final positional breakdown before the draft tomorrow. But I am originally from Gastonia, North Carolina, and 30 miles west of Charlotte. Currently live in Charlotte. I'm re- I work at the airport here. I'm very close to um, Panther Stadium. So there's a lot of that. I'm still looking for Adam Thielen every day in baggage claim. I will get that picture to you guys if I get to meet him because I'm going to fangirl. But I'm a North Carolina native. Um, I'm an Air Force veteran of 12 years, and I've been a canine handler since 2012. So I am the North Carolina dog dude. And I'm uh-huh. not going to say I'm, you know, the world's best dog trainer or anything. I'm still a handler now. I've trained dogs. I've instructed. I've handled forever. But that's where it was. It's pretty easy. I thought it was catchy. And then, you know, just like this, when I hand it out at my music gigs or if I hand it out somewhere else, it, it always sparks a conversation. Um, cause you know, I'm a, this is what I do. I play music, I handle dogs and I do football. So that's the pyramid for me, but that's a short, but long winded answer there. Just, that's a, your just trying a dog guy authority. from, just a dog guy from Charlotte, man. There you that's go. It. There you go. Well, thanks again. As always, it's the second time we've had you. And I, again, I appeared on you guys' show uh, a couple Tuesdays back. What time tomorrow are you guys going live? Just so that I can get that out to my audience here real quick. We'll say the same time tomorrow, 7.30. We haven't agreed upon it yet, but we have to do okay. – we took last week off. It was so dead in the water. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to talk about the corner we just acquired. We're going to talk about the defensive line. Like when uh, Justin was on our show, we did a positional breakdown to kind of fill the dead weeks up to the draft. So we started at quarterback all the way around the offense, all the way around the defense. Now we're back. And, um, yeah, we're going to be excited. We're going to take some predictions to see where we land too, much like today's show, but we're not going to do three rounds. So. A little, a little something different today. 
Sounds like a plan. Well, everybody watching me on Purple and Gold for days, I thank you all for supporting me. Go check out those guys when the show is over. Uh, check out some of their videos. Hit those like buttons and consider subscribing to them because they are good people. And one of these days, we'll get them uh, crossing over a little bit more because I'd love to have uh, all three of you guys on with us here at once. Let me get some shout outs in here real quick. Yogi is in the building. Thank you kindly, Yogi, who gave me the login and password for Pro Football uh, Focus on the mock site that we're going to be able to use so that we can do the trades and everything else. Giddy gang, what's going on? Oh, that's school mafia again. Thank you kindly. Sub Yogi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to circle back uh to oh, first off, Bob is in the house. Bob, I want to mock. Bob is the like biggest uh every time we on a show, no matter which channel we on, he's like, I want to mock. So hey, thank you kindly. And of course, our wonderful lady Mary's in the building as well. Do want to say a, a quick shout and a thank you here to uh something that David Chain said here. That's awesome. I was an MP in the army for 15 years, so uh, first and foremost, David Change, thank you kindly for your services here to that. And of course, uh, for participating here. But that that's pretty sweet there as well. So, OK, now, having said all that, one more shout out I got to give. And that is to Sarah. Thank you kindly for joining us. Uh, <laughs> if you ever want to be entertained, just tune into one of Rap's uh, lives when Sarah's in there, because uh, it, it gets it gets rather entertaining. But thanks to King Kindly for joining us here. So, yeah, it was funny. We did talk about cornerbacks uh, when I was on uh, your show, and it's, it's funny we had said we would like the Vikings to sign at least one more veteran corner to get some depth in here. And we went through about a half dozen cornerbacks that we thought of, and uh, the person we signed here today just happened to not be any single one of them. But, Mike, I'll start with you since we've kind of been bantering back and forth here. We signed, <clears throat> and I'm seeing, see if I can get it right, Joe Juwan Williams. Williams is easy enough, but I believe the pronunciation is Joe Juwan uh, cornerback from the New England Patriots missed all of last year with a shoulder injury, but uh, comes in at six foot four, two hundred and ten pounds. I'm saying that okay, well, he fits the uh, the traits of a Flores defense here. But uh, talk us a little bit. What are your thoughts on this signing here the Vikings did today, Mike? No, Jawan Williams. I think it's a I think it's a really good signing um, for what it represents. We talked about this before. We need a veteran corner that was not just named Byron Murphy. You cannot rely on a Caleb Evans. Uh, Andrew Booth, Tay Gowan, Kalen Barnes to just represent the cornerback room. And though those guys may surprise us, and I'm pulling for Tay Gowan. He gave me a follow on Twitter. I hope he has a fantastic preseason and you know wins a starting job. You want to rely on having more bodies yes. than that. Um, yes, if someone surprised you, awesome. But you want to have as many veterans as possible because you lost Patrick Peterson, you lost Chris Boyd, you lost your nucleus and your you know locker room leaders in the cornerback room. So. Though this kid's still young, um, Juwan Jane, Jane uh, excuse me, Juwan Williams. No, it's it's a fine sign for what it represents. Big tall mm -hmm. dude, and it's why I said they probably didn't bring back Du Shelley because he didn't fit the height. Well, there you go. They go and sign a six foot four corner. And I imagine this is going to be nothing more than a veteran's minimum, which is about what they offered Duke Shelley here. Real quick, Kyle, before I throw it to you, Skull for Life, shout out to you. Thank you. You are in the building. Thank you, Kylie, for joining us. Kyle, your thoughts on Joe Juan? Or... I'm just going to call him J – well, I can't call him JJ. No, I know. Can't do that. I know. Can't you can't do... even call him JJ. Okay, we'll call him J-Dub. How about that? Until we get an official. I mean, I went off of what Wikipedia said, so it must be true. But Joe Juan Williams, what do you got, Kyle? I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> and it, I don't expect this guy to come in and be uh, Antoine Winfield or somebody like that. Dude, you just need a body. He's a former second round pick. If Bill Belichick trades up to get you, I like that. I'm okay with you having the whole season to recover. Same thing's happening for Scene and Booth. Bring them in. We just need bodies. That gives you leverage. And I don't want to spoil what we're going to talk about in a minute, but let's say you do trade uh, Hunter and or Cook and or Smith. Maybe they do a little wheel and deal where they trade back a little bit. Now you can go get another corner and you still have picks. I love it. I love the size the most. I love a tall corner. I love somebody rangy. And if he can be up to form and just be a rotational player, that is a ballpark home run for the formula that Questy is doing right now. So I'm all for that. Thank God they did this before. It was, of course, it wasn't a name we had even thought about when you came on the show, but I don't care. That's what they get paid to do because they know every player and their brother out there. So yeah, there I'm a go. big fan of this. I, I don't expect much, but it's that low risk, high reward uh, signing. And that's kind of on par for what we've seen the last year from this head coach and GM. And I love it. Dilly dilly in the building. Thank you kindly again. Uh, he likes your comment that you like it just because it is a warm body. And, and that's the key too. you know, usually you have somewhere between seven to 10 DBs on your roster. 
granted that's counting safeties too, but in camp, you gotta, you gotta fill out that 90 man roster. And right now, up until this move, even with this move, you know, we don't have a lot of depth there. Yes. We're counting on Booth Jr. And Caleb Evans, who have both had injury history and along with a little bit of Lewis scene as well. This just makes the most sense of all of the moves the Vikings could have made. Yeah. Oh, Hey, we could have signed a wide receiver. We could have done that. No, this was the move that makes the most sense. I honestly will say I will be happy if they do actually sign one more veteran cornerback, whether it's post the draft and, you know, perhaps after they make the moves with Smith, Hunter and cook and free up some money that way to where, you know, round, you know, the, the, the back end round after the, <clears throat> excuse me, free agency post the draft, if you can get something, we mentioned Rocky Asin on the podcast that we had done together here. And the reason I bring his name up again is because, again, he fits the Flores system. He fits the Kwesi Adafa Mensa age range. And I don't want to be pigeonholed into taking a cornerback in the draft with the first pick that we go with. We end up taking a cornerback or two. That's fine. But I don't want a pick to be forced there. I mean, am I on to something, Mike, or am I on something? No, I, I fully agree with you. I actually don't care if it's a hot take. I do not want a first-round corner. I'm done with it. We've been there. We've done it. Unless somebody the, really – like if Joey Porter's yes, if Gonzalez did. falls from okay. Oregon or something like that right. or Witherspoon, fine. Like if something like that happens, but that's not going to realistically happen. If you can't get one of the top two guys mm -hmm. consensus-wise, don't overthink this. Go draft other positions, build up the receiver. Remember, like everyone keeps talking about corner. We need a receiver far more in my opinion. You, you no respect right to KJ Osborne. He's a really good wide receiver three. They need a guy behind JJ that can stretch the field. They need that. There was a big part of the – how many times, Justin, when we did our show with Kyla last year, did we say it was JJ or Hawk or Bust? How Pretty many much. times? All you the know? games that we won, it was that. And all the games we lost, it was because we didn't have that. It, exactly. It really, it really did boil down to that, unfortunately. I mean, look, at the Philly game, JJ did nothing. We didn't have Hawkinson yet. Um, you know, JJ Dallas. had a human – Dallas, Dallas, nobody did anything. So Green Bay, nobody <laughs> did anything. Now, the Detroit game in Detroit that we lost, JJ and Cousins, absolutely had a great game there. And that was – I remember the post-game rant that I did with SK. I was just like, you just wasted one of Kirk Cousins' best performances because Kevin yeah. O'Connell was trying to outsmart himself. But just want to give a shout-out to uh, anybody who's watching us over on your channel at the Purple People Podcast. Feel free to leave your comments. Uh, we don't bite. In fact, we encourage uh, the interaction here. As you can see, all of my usuals and all the companies that I normally keep with have already kept that chat going. So, But if you could, the only thing we ask is kind of like when you go to a guest house, you take your shoes off. Taking your shoes off on a podcast on YouTube is simply hitting the like button for us to make sure we get that YouTube algorithm smashed. But uh, Bob wants to throw in, hey, Jalen Naylor can play. Naylor, hardly know her. But jokes aside... <laughs> I guess let's just get this one out of the way. We we had this conversation earlier, <laughs> and I'm going to throw this somewhat serious and somewhat tongue in cheek. But do you guys think that KJ Osborne is you know an okay player, or do you think he's you know what do you think of KJ Osborne, you guys? Mike, I'll start with you. I think he's a quality wide receiver. You think he's Next. quality? Yes, he's I'm going to move off of this. All right, go ahead, Kyle. All right, Kyle, do you think he's a quality wide receiver? I think he's more than quality. Right. I was sitting uh, two years ago, not this past season, but the year before. I I moved back home to Charlotte on Columbus Day. And then that Sunday, uh, right before I started, the Vikings played in Carolina. It was uh, Mike Zimmer's last year. And I watched K.J. Osborne get the go-ahead touchdown in overtime. Yeah. And he, he – I don't, I don't want to say he's single-handedly because a lot of people made plays. Mm -hmm. But that dude hit the spark on that Indianapolis game, and we were getting the crap beat out of us by a terrible yeah. team. I was there. Yeah, he's uh, he's quality wide receiver. He's a good player. <laughs> yeah. In all seriousness, I, 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 don't, I, ha I don't have an issue because it, it, it's my thought process on KJ, too, that I like him as a number three wide receiver. And it's no disrespect to him that I say I'm not sure that he could fill the shoes of a number two wide receiver. It's not the disrespect and it's not th hating on him or anything. It's certain guys perform well in certain roles. We talked about Duke Shelley uh, a little bit earlier. Um, Duke Shelley was a phenomenal fourth cornerback and a phenomenal red zone cornerback. But you try to take Duke Shelley and all of a sudden make him the starting cornerback opposite of uh, <clears throat> Byron Murphy. Sometimes you're putting him in a position to be unsuccessful because it's not, you know, something he's got the strengths for, or something he's suited for. I think KJ Osborne in spurts last year provided the sparks. You talked about the Indianapolis game that. Uh, we we had mentioned, as well as the first Detroit game where he caught the game-winning touchdown with less than a minute left, um, as well as a, a lot of different efforts this season. Uh, in fact, um, he scored one of the touchdowns uh, in the playoff game 
But it's not a matter of that he's not quality. It's just I think he's best suited to be a number three wide receiver. But to say that we don't have any quality wide receivers whatsoever is utterly preposterous. Mike, did you want to throw anything last in here before I uh, before I throw it back to the comments real quick? Yeah, yeah, I did. It, it, KJ's role kind of reminds you of what Van Jefferson was in the Rams, right? Yes. You had Odell, you had yes. Cooper Cup. Yes. He, but he did his role, and when he was needed and when he was called upon, he did a job. Look, do I think KJ Osborne is, you know, a top tier wide receiver? Probably not, if I'm being perfectly honest. Right. But does he fill his role perfectly? Yes. And that's a quality wide receiver three. And you know what it is? I don't want him to think, you know, I am going to make a comparison, but we had it on years past, about eight years ago. You know who I've been looking for? And we've had it pretty consistently. They've just been very good. We had a Jarius Wright who did his yep. job very yes. well. And that one season yep. with Aldrick Robinson, why the hell didn't he come back? All he I, did was catch touchdowns. Yeah. I think it was a money thing because he was a vested veteran and, you know, I don't know. I'm just guessing, but I'm with you guys here. I, I don't, I'm not saying I don't know if he can be a wide receiver too. I just think it's smart, like at any position to include wide receiver, quarterback, corner, whatever, the more the merrier. Yes. So find another one and make sure they do different things because we know what mm-hmm. JJ does. Well, we know what KJ does. Well, yeah. get a burner out there. Like Mike said, why not? What, what can you lose in an offensive driven league with an offensive minded coach? I mean, exactly. He's only, like you said, I'm just, I'm repeating what you guys said. He's only going to benefit from that. And exactly. that's not saying like, oh, I don't want him on the team. Hell no, I want him on the team. Of yeah, course. Yes. <laughs> I was I, upset I will... when they went, I was upset when they got rid of Jarius Wright. And why did they get rid of him? Well, because they had drafted Laquan Treadwell, and Laquan Treadwell was on a rookie contract. And we got rid yeah. of Jarius Wright. And what have we been doing since then? Trying to find Jarius Wright's replacement. Okay. Anyway. Mm-hmm. I like, I, I, Worth, I like Worthless. I'll let you go, Mike. I'm sorry. I like Worthless's comment here. KJ, best wide receiver three in the league, but he's not a deep threat I want from a wide receiver two. Exactly. And that's not hatred. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. And I, I just want to throw one last thing out here with this KJ Osborne discussion. Like, they need to bring in another body. But that's not a shot at KJ. Right. The, the, the wide receiver room was thin last year. Mm-hmm. They, they got, if we're being perfectly honest, yep. we were caught. Like, if there was an injury, not go whether there was it. You would have been relying on rookie Jalen Naylor realistically to be the next man up, or Jalen Rieger, which was a fun experience. That was a fun experience, Jalen Rieger. Yeah. Um, I'm not so sure how I feel about that long term, but <laughs> I digress. At least he's a good punt returner. If he does that for many years, that's good enough for me because we've been waiting to talk about guys who've been wanting to replace for years. Marcus Sherrill was another one who was literally a Nine punt lives, returner. Dude. You know, so Nine same lives. same idea. No, totally, I agree. Oh. <sighs> Naylor, <laughs> seriously? That's no, funny. it's funny when 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 they when they made that trade with Philadelphia for Rager. I'm just like, okay, we got a nice solid punt return and a guy that can come come in. And I think he had a total of what seven to ten catches. Yeah, not so much. Anyway, let's move off of the wide receiver talk here for a moment. So we've hit, well, let's just let's just wipe out the rest of the uh, of the discussion about people being traded or resigned. Zadarius so Smith. Let, let, let me ask you guys the question this way. Do you think it behooves the Vikings to try to find a way to keep at least one of Zadarius Smith and Daniel Hunter? Or if it's just not in the cards, we'll just have to make do with what we do if we do get rid of both of them, assuming we can get some value uh, one way or the other. Kyle, I'll start with you on that one. I'd like to keep one or the other, yes. Um, ideally, they're both under contract. Now, I don't know how ugly that would get. But there's Pretty. there's a, there's pros and cons to both, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that I have pulled up here, I have a player we could replace for the edge very well. But – if you're going to get rid of somebody, I just want you to get capital back. And at this point, the Vikings are kind of desperate. Get any capital. Let's let's just get anything. Obviously, you don't want to get fleeced, but it was very weird, and we've said this before, so I won't go too long on it. But it's very weird to have a guy who comes in, helps the team, give him a spark, and then he posts like a, a goodbye going away thing. It's like, dude, nobody's let you go. What are you doing? Now, you're hurting yourself and you're hurting the team. So just chill like behind closed doors. Keep it there. But um, if I have to go down and pick one or the other, I'm keeping Daniel Hunter. Just solely for the fact that if he's gone, mm-hmm. God, it's going to be a lot of money to not have him play for us. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's that's it. I mean, that's it's common sense, I think. But, I mean, that's just my opinion on it. Mike? No, I'm with Kyle. You have to keep one. I mean, it's a necessity. You cannot let both go this late in the process. But I will say this. If you let Zedarius Smith go, you want to throw a guy who could be a one-year – you know, re- rejuvenation project. Jadavion Clowney's still available. Mm-hmm. That would be a lot of fun to have a rotation of Clowney, 
Hunter and Davenport. And I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I'm right. just throwing it out there. But I don't think he's going to get, you know, a crazy amount of money. And I think there's a chance you could get Jadavion Clowney in a one-year deal for like $7 million. Yes. If you could get something like that done and you draft a corner, but you still have that edge, you know, spot available. Because like I said, if Z goes, you do need to fill that spot. And I don't really want to do it with a draft pick. Jadavion Clowney would be another name to throw out there. I like that too, Mike, because he's kind of been – hes I mean, he's well into this now. It's not like he just did this. He's basically a mercenary for hire the last couple of years. <laughs> Literally. I, I, I'm yeah. totally okay with that. That's a, I didn't even think of that. Such a great point. Yeah, I'd be all right with that. I'll say this. You remember this time last year, Mike? Well, a little bit before when – towards the end of the season of Zimmer's last year where I said I wanted to move off Zimmer, I wanted to move off Spielman, and I wanted to move yeah. off Kirk. And one of the things you had said to me was, I keep, I hear what you're saying, but getting rid of all three of those key positions simultaneously, you're asking for trouble. All I will say is, is if you're going to get rid of both Zadarius Smith and Daniil Hunter, with all due respect to uh, Davenport, okay, guess what? We signed you to be a, a piece. Now guess what? Those two pieces that were ahead of you are both gone, and now your expectation level just went up a little bit there. So – there is part of me that really, really wants this Daniel Hunter thing to work out because I think if you can find a way to get him a contract that is amenable to him without breaking the bank, it still gives you some sort of continuity. I mentioned it earlier about wanting to see him with Flores as opposed to Donna Shell. And I do still think that Daniel Hunter has uh, a couple, two, three years left of high level play there. But if he's going to be asking for, you know, something short of Nick Bosa money, I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen at that point. Right. I agree. This is the thing, though, Justin. Okay, with all due respect to Daniel Hunter, unless he's willing to sign a two-year extension with an upgraded pay for this year, so three more years on the books for an upgraded pay, I don't think Quincy's going to come close to negotiations. Like, I think th- this. I-, I honestly could see Hunter going, <laughs> and it's it's a weird situation, and it's not ideal, but. It is what it is. And, and like, mm-hmm. I will say this. Javion Clowney, if you did bring him in, you want to talk about a guy who could have, like, 10 sacks out of nowhere because he's so sporadic. Right. He could actually fill the void for a year, and then you go and get a guy younger. And and this is the thing. Like, with Daniel, you've got to be careful. He's not young anymore, right? He's not 26 years old. He's 29 in October. I, I don't know if you want to give him a four- or five-year deal. Right, like no, I'm and, not keeping. And, he, and by the way, five, Justin, no. as we always say, get your money. Yeah, I just don't think it makes sense in Minnesota. I just yeah. don't. I mean, again, I don't know what you could possibly get for him in trade value. I mean, obviously, again, as I, I gave an example earlier. If Buffalo said, you know what, we'll give you the 27 pick for Daniel Hunter. Okay, done, done. Yeah. I'll take the extra 18 million dollar dead. So five extra more million, I got to find out for absolutely nothing, but. For something like that, yes. If the best that I can get is a, you know, Buffalo's third round pick, yeah. or, because again, think about this with whatever you're going to sign Jadavian Clowney to, if Daniel Hunter was amenable to taking that, I'd rather just keep, you know, uh, Jadavian, uh, excuse me, I'd rather just keep Daniel Hunter if you've got to spend that kind of money for it. I mean, I, that's just me, though. What do you think? That's, that's the thing. It comes down to price, right? With Clowney, I generally think he'll take a one year deal for $8 million fully guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Something along those lines, yeah. maybe less. I don't know. Depends on how long he's a free agent for. Um, but with Hunter, like he's going to want a significant upgrade in pay and raise and pay, and he deserves it. By the way, he deserves to be making between eighteen and twenty million. This the is- thing is, I don't think Quincy's going to give it to him. No. I mean, they just don't. If you look at the way he negotiates, he wants to keep guys through a certain threshold of age. Daniel doesn't fit it, and you know we all can agree. I would imagine. They're going to prioritize Hawkins and JJ, and they should, by the way, and they should. I just don't see how it fits. I could be wrong. I'd love to see Daniel Hunter back. How would you not? No, it's I just see. going to be extremely difficult. And we said this for months. The last time we had Kyle on, we talked about Daniel Hunter because we knew this was coming down the pipeline. Yep, exactly. Seems to always come full circle with us, Kyle. You know, whether I'm on your show and the next time we're back, we're talking Daniel Hunter or cornerbacks. It always seems to come back this well. We're going to get to what everybody came here for in just a couple of moments, and that is the Vikings mod. But, of course, I have to give a shout-out to 
my brother, too evil to hope. Uh, I'm still waiting on Randy to sign the jersey for you before I mail it out, before you go to the bit. See, too evil's got this bit where he said I was going to give away one of my jerseys and that he won it. And I'm like, yeah, that's just not going to happen. But Purple Gang, absolutely. Thank you kindly, everybody, for joining us. We always do appreciate that. Um, having said all that, before we get to the mock, what do you think? Because once we decide to start doing the mock, we're going to all agree upon a strategy we'll go with. But what do you think as of right now? And I'll start with you, Kyle. What do you think the Vikings approach is going to be? Do you think they're going to try to move up? Do you think they're going to try to hang back and maybe trade back? What 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 does your gut tell you the likely scenario is at this point in time? Value trade back. I think there will be a couple of players, not that we would eye so preciously but they'll mm -hmm. be there at 23 maybe we don't need them maybe you don't we don't have as high a grade they'll take a phone call they'll go back five six seven eight spots whatever it is mm -hmm. you get a second out of that and then you're sitting pretty you still get a fifth year option on a first round player you get your second back i think it's a smart move i think it's a safe move and it's not the safe as we talked about the other day where scare money doesn't make money if you go up and get a quarterback i'm all for it man do whatever you want to do but if I'm running the team, if Kyle Smith is running the team, I am getting more draft picks because we don't have that many, and I know I can get more value. Just don't trade with Detroit. Thanks. Please. Please don't <laughs> trade with Brad Holmes. Chicago again. for that matter. Mike, your thoughts? All right. So I will make this one prediction. This isn't very bold, but I will say it. They will not stay at 23. They will either go up or they're going to trade down. I pro Everyone who thinks they're going to take, you know, sp spend that 23rd overall pick, keep dreaming. If he was willing to go down 20 spots last year yeah. and he has less capital than he did a year ago, I'm pretty confident he's going to either go nuts and go all the way up for his quarterback of the future or he's going to move down. Um, but if I was if I was Questy, what I would do, I'd go with the quarterback. I mean, that's the fun part, right? Like, go and get your guy. Um, there's only two guys that I want, so the odds of them actually going and getting one of those guys is very difficult. But mm -hmm. that's what right. I would like to see. Mike wants Tanner McKee. We can we know about it. I'm going to talk about him later. Spoiler alert: We're in the show right now. Uh, that's your guy that you want to trade up to three four is Tanner McKee, Mike. <laughs> yeah, no, he got me. I almost lost there, Kyle. Well done. <laughs> they didn't meet with Tanner McGee, though, so there was a chance they could take him at 23. The world, where did this guy come from? How did this guy out of Stanford? No, 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 no. Where did this speculation about Tanner McGee? And then I look into this guy, and I'm like. Why are we even talking about him? I'm sorry. I don't mean any, no disrespect to the kid. I'm not saying it like that. I'm just like, really? In my, in my little – In the first prep, round? Prep? No, not the first round. He's got a third round grade. It's so funny. He's a four-star recruit in 2018. I just thought it was hilarious because there's all this – oh, it's Anthony Richardson. It's Will Levis. It's C.J. Stroud. It's like, no, no, no. It's going to be a boring <laughs> third round, fourth round quarter, quarterback. And you'll be like, damn it. That's what's gonna happen. Like, you guys, you guys, you know that's gonna happen now. Don't say that, Kyle. I don't want a corner. But in, in all seriousness, like this is the thing with the quarterback situation is usually you don't want to tip off who you're taking, and I, I am probably hurting myself with that logic. But they never talked to CJ Stroud. A boy can dream. A boy can dream. <laughs> Wouldn't be mad at it. Justin, well, what do you think they're gonna do? I think they're going to trade up for Anthony Richardson. And I'm going to speak that into existence one way or another. No, I, I think that their desire is to move up and get one of the top quarterbacks. I'm going to say it like that. Now, that doesn't mean that I think that they're going to be reckless about it. Like, if they wanted to get one of the top three quarterbacks, they could already make a deal with Arizona. Right now, you could say to Arizona, Daniel Hunter, Dalvin Cook, three first-round picks. And then in Arizona would probably be interested in something like that. If they just like Carolina, they didn't waste any time. They traded up with Chicago and said, no, 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 we're trading up to the number one pick so that we are guaranteed to take the guy that we want. And we don't care the cost. If the Vikings wanted to get one of the top three, they could trade up with Arizona or even Houston for that matter. They could trade up with one of those two right now and get him. I think what they're trying to do is I think that they're trying to acquire that quarterback, but I think they're trying to, here's an idea, not pay as big a premium as they absolutely have to. I don't think yeah. that there is any shot. And I would love to be wrong about this. Contrary to the people in my life who tell me I never like to admit or want to be wrong, I would love to be wrong when I say there is no chance on God's green earth that that trade with the New York Jets 
with Anthony Richardson falling all the way to four, fall falling all the way to fourteen, where the Vikings then trade up with the Jets and only have to move up nine spots and only have to give up their first and a first next year. If that happens, I'll leave town. I mean, I'll come back the next day, but I'll leave town. <laughs> but jokes aside, all I'm saying is this: there is no chance that happens. And if it did. I would run around after midnight and yelling in the streets and I would do a couple of cartwheels. If you could get that guy at 14 and not have to completely sell half the farm to get him. Having said that, would I move up right now to three to do it? Yes. That's what I would do. But then again, I'm biased because at this point I I'm ready for that next step. And if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. I don't think the Vikings are willing to move up to three that recklessly and easily. So I think they're trying, I think they're trying to split the difference. I think they're hoping that some crazy stuff happens and that despite the fact that up until today, you know, the first two picks are going to be quarterbacks. And by the time pick number 10 goes around, Richardson will be gone and somebody else will take Will Levis at 10. And that if you want one of the top four guys, you got to get into 10. I think that they're hoping that there's a little fallage there so that they don't have to give up so many picks. That's what I think that what their goal is. Guys, I apologize. I- I'm going to step away for one minute and turn these lights on and get these dogs in, but I will be right back. Oh, right. yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Can Go I, ahead, can I uh, touch on that quickly, Justin? Yeah. Um, so I came to this consensus, and this probably wouldn't be particularly popular, but I'll do it anyway. I only want to trade it for C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young. You probably already thought that anyway. No, I had but lunch. I, I've, with Richardson – and Will Levis, I don't know if you knew this or seen these reports. Again, it could be lies. I mean, it's lying season, right? But I did see a report that three teams in the NFL don't have first-round grades on either Richardson or Levis. Those are not guys I want to trade up for unless I'm literally giving up 87 and 23. That, that's it. Like, I, I have such a low bar on those two, and I grade them so similarly because there's so many variables that could go wrong. If you're going right. to do it, fine. Mm-hmm. But it's got to be at the right price range for me personally. I mean, again, I would I do it if you told me right now it's going to cost you three first round picks into Neil Hunter. But if you don't give up that price, there's zero chance that you could get Anthony Richardson as an example. Would I pay that price? Yes. If you told me right now, hey, you don't need to pay that much for him. You can sit around and wait and you can trade up with, say, the Vegas Raiders at pick seven. And then it's only going to cost you to Neil Hunter and two first round picks. OK, I'm fine with that, too. My threshold is is I want one of those top three guys, and so I'm willing to do what it takes. Having said that, yeah, the Vikings are not going to make a move pre-draft to get up that high, I don't think. I not think under Questy. Not under Questy. They're going to try to win on the margins. They're going to try to you know squeeze as much out of the stock price as they can. I'm just saying that I hope that they ultimately end up making that move. And we're going to be live on all of the channels across all of the purple and school media platforms here. So if y'all don't already know, first off, if you don't already subscribe to purple and go for days, please do so head on over after the show to purple people podcast and give my boy Kyle and his crew uh, some likes and subscribes, but purple and go for days, purple pocket podcast, Minnesota sports talk, GG scold and purple and scold media. We will be doing a five channel simulcast the night of the draft. We will have a cavalcade of guests, Number one confirmed guest is Alexander Madison's dad will be joining us. He has worked with both SK and Dave in the past, so he will be joining us along with a cavalcade of others uh, as well. So if you don't already subscribe to all the channels, hit the like buttons and hit the subscribe buttons with the notification bells there. Um, I'm just saying I th- it's going to be wild one way or the other because the one thing I don't want is I don't want to not trade up, get to 22, and then we flip the switch to it's pick 23 to Vikings are on the clock. And 10 seconds later, somebody else has already traded into our pick. That's going to drive me crazy. And I know it might be the right move, but that's going to drive me crazy. It depends on the board falls. Like, I'm not against the train. To, obviously, you know where I stand on this. If CJ Strokes there are three, go up, mm-hmm. give up the picks, be done with it, mm-hmm. and get your guy. But it, de- it does depend on the board falls. Because, say, for example, goes one – Young, which I think we all can agree on at this point. It looks like it's heading that way based off the betting odds uh, changing today. Two, Will, uh, Will Anderson most likely. Three is probably where CJ Stroh will go for whatever team gives it the highest price to Arizona. Mm-hmm. And then you got four, Anthony Richardson to the Colts po- probably or possibly. Right. So at that point, like if the board falls like that and Minnesota can't be the highest bidder, 
See if Levis falls to 23. If not, trade out. That, that's what I would do personally, If right. depending on how the board falls. I do want to ask you quickly, Justin, since yeah. Kyle just came back, just right. to really make this quick. Is Richardson your number one quarterback of this draft? <sighs> no. He's okay. not my number one quarterback. What he is, to me, I believe Richardson has the highest upside. That's what Richardson is to me. I believe that right now, C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young could start without having to sit out for a year. I think Anthony Richardson needs to sit out for a year. But I also think that the best realization of Anthony Richardson is higher than the best realization of either Stroud or Young. Hold on just a second here. I don't know what Rap is talking about trying to say that I got him locked or something. What? Send me again another one, Rap. Hold up. I agree with you, Justin. I don't. Uh, anyway, you guys go. I'm gonna try and get I, him. I fixed think up that here, yeah. Stroud and okay. Young present two different ways of play. I, I, the only the only knock I have on Bryce Young is the size. But I, I said this uh, in a space with you, and I might have said it on the show before. But for the guys listening that haven't seen me on here before or tuned into my show, I, I heard a, a little thing about. I think it was on uh, Colin Coward, one of the guys. I think it was Joel Clad or somebody like that said Bryce Young will go out and run his wide receivers routes just for fun. Mm. And he'll run them perfectly. He's an amazing athlete. He's super smart. You have to be good. If you're playing for Nick Saban, he's not going to play any scrubs. Saw that in the national championship game. He'll pull you out of one so he can win the game. I like him for what I saw for my money. My number one is CJ Stroud because the whole time he was at Ohio state, he played in the pocket. He did well. And that game against Georgia, the coach said, all right, man, all the chips are in, do your thing. And I saw him be mobile and run around, not using his legs primarily, but getting out of the pocket. And he looked awesome. The kicker lost in that game. They, they could have went and won the national championship. So mm-hmm. that's why he's up there. But I see your point, And I like, and I said this on our space and on our call, I love the size and the athleticism of an Anthony Richardson. The problem is I'm not even worried about the completion percentage. You have coaches to fix that. The right. problem is you don't have enough playing time. So is one year going to be enough? I don't know. But with Kirk being here and if we got him, he's going to sit. There's not going to be any. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Anthony Richards is going to play. It doesn't matter if Kirk was doing terrible. He's getting paid 30-something million dollars. He's starting all these games. So Mm -hmm. that's where I'm at with that. I I don't care about Will Levis one way or the other. I don't. I don't care about him. No, I want want him to be I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. If they come, they come. I just want the price to be right. But. Yeah, I like C.J. Stroud, and you're right. If Houston does the unthinkable and doesn't take one, they had better be speed dialing Arizona and be like, blank check, what is it? Mm-hmm. Go get him. Let me get some yeah. shouts in here. I've had the name up there, but Angel, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate it. I got a new one in here. We got Andrew. Is this My your boy, Andrew? Is this What's your up, boy? Man? All He's right. There. He is there for every show for us. Thank you for tuning in, man. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Kylie, for joining us. Hit them like buttons on the way in. And uh, if you like what we got going on, hit the subscribe button to my channel as well. Uh, SK is in the building. He says Young is greater than Stroud. We had that conversation earlier today, but it's going to take a year of sitting and learning, then another year for developing on the field. I don't. Are you talking about uh, Richardson? Which one are you talking about there, SK, just to be on the safe side? But I've said it before. I'll say it again. The reason I want to make a quarterback move this draft is because we have Kirk Cousins under contract for one more year. I don't want to extend Kirk Cousins next year and get a guy next year, and I don't want to bring in a bridge quarterback because, by the way, assuming everything goes as well as it can for the season, this season, you're going to be drafting in the late teens, early 20s again. And if you don't have Kirk Cousins, any team you try to trade for is going to know that you're desperate and is going to be asking you for more. So with all that being said, um, I, I want to get it done here this year, but for some reason, my by my guy rap is trying to get into the chat, and for some reason, it's not letting him in. And I have absolutely no idea why, because there is no way on God's green earth I would block my skull brother there. But having said all that, um, I'm gonna get this. Uh, I'm gonna get this stream set up here so that we can do the mocks here. But I'm gonna throw it out to the listeners there before we get the mock started here. Any other particular topic or question that you guys want to throw out there uh, while we get this going? Uh, let's see. Houston is inquiring about Rodgers, Bob says. Is that right? Can I be honest with this? Yeah. I'm just going to get off my chest because this annoys me. Oh, I heard San Fran a week ago. He's going to the Jets. Get, mm-hmm. get, please. Let's just, it's all media garbage spin. They want their clicks. He is going to the New York Jets. It's just a matter of price. Kyle? <laughs> what, yeah. what's your thoughts on this Aaron Rodgers bid? Why don't you tell, why don't you give our, our listeners your it's thoughts? It's the same on thing. The, the door is closed on green Bay. I think he would retire if that's what it came to. His legacy <coughs> cemented. I think he would be fine with saying, I'll go do whatever I want now. 
I think the idea of proving everybody wrong because he is that kind of guy with the chip on him, his shoulder, he's he wants to do that. And they ha- don't get it twisted. They are they are a quarterback away, and I think they'll even compete oh, yeah. with the Bills to win the East if he goes over there. The problem is who's going to give first? And the Jets could be smart. I said this on my show not too long ago was they can wait till after the draft and say, no, 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 we're getting all our picks this year, and we'll give you next year's first round now. And then the Packers, yeah, you don't get to move up a little bit, but you still get compensation later. He's off the books, blah, blah, blah. But it's the Jets or bust. If he doesn't go to the Jets, I don't see another team because I don't think he wants to play for Houston. And he can be like, no, I'm retiring. Thanks. And, and, and like, this is the thing Joe Douglas traded, he's got a second round pick for Elijah Moore, who was literally not playing for the Jets, basically. He was literally on the back end of their depth chart because he couldn't stay healthy and he was a culture problem. And they turned him for a second. Joe Douglas is a fantastic GM. He's not going to overthink this. He knows. I'm just outbidding myself. I'm going to, you know, squeeze the Packers and screw them over. Why wouldn't I? I have nothing to lose. I'm betting against myself. I'm not going to overbid. Yeah, that makes absolutely no sense to me at all. Hey, you know what? Here's the thing. I, I just want this Rodgers thing to be done. I'm sick. Yes. Thank you, Mary. You know what? You know what? Yeah. Rodgers, don't care where he goes. Tired of it. I agree 100%. Uh, Rap, I just looked, and I don't have anybody on my block users list, but let's just test this theory out. Go over to Purple People Podcast. That's our guest uh, page there as well, and see if you can uh, like and see if you can put a comment in there just out of curiosity, because I don't know why you're not coming through here, my brother, but I, I digress. Uh, let's see what we got going on. I don't want us to draft at 23. I agree with you, Mike. I think that there is a very small chance that they're actually going to draft at 23. They're either yes. going to move up or down. I don't think they're going to stay at 23 whatsoever. So I agree with uh, I agree with Sarah on that one there. SK, what's good? Skull Mafia, what's good? Okay, let's see. All right, what are y'all thoughts on uh, uh, Duggan? They would talk about it in the oh, chat. Oh, are you room. talking about Max Duggan out of TCU? you got to be kidding yeah. me. And I didn't get to it earlier because I was looking at some other things. But all right, let's just go through it. What do you, 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 so I, I tell you, you don't like him, Mike. <laughs> no. he. You know, everyone likes to, you know, go off on me about Stetson Ben being a six-round pick. At least he's a winner. And at least he actually has mm-hmm. a decent arm and hits his receivers. on. I watched the national title game. Max Duggan is is not particularly good, at least in my opinion. It's unfair for that because he was getting, they were going to get their shit rocked anyways in that game. Sure, but yes. I agree. And here's the, here's the reason I'm out on him. I don't hate him as a person. I don't even hate him as a player. No. If you're going to get a quarterback, I need one that's going to be a franchise dude, not somebody that is fighting for backup spot or whatever. I don't need another freaking. Uh, Joe Webb or somebody like that. And I'm sorry I'm comparing you to Joe Webb, but you're not <laughs> going to see any playing time, dude. You're right. not. No. And right. I don't want to do that whole thing of like, this is like the heartwarming story. What? No, no, no. I need a dude that like when he comes in, the whole locker room's like, oh, man, we got the guy. Like this is the dude. And I want someone that Justin Jefferson that's like, I can't wait to play with that guy. I don't think Max Duggan is the guy that's like getting no. Justin Jefferson off. I, I don't think so. <laughs> I, and just let me throw one last thing out here. To your point, Carl, it's actually a really good one. You want a guy to, you know, get this culture and this locker room going. And you know what else it will, that will do? He'll get Kirk Cousins to play the most motivated football of his entire life. So worst case, he plays great. We have a fun season. And then mm-hmm. we have our guy. And, you know, worst case, he leaves. And he has a terrible season, right? Like, it's a win-win if you go and get your guy. I, I don't understand mm-hmm. this. Um, idea how dare we consider moving on for Kirk Cousins it's it's nuts it's well, nuts the, <laughs> you know one of these days Kyle we're going to introduce you to rap and have you sit in on an episode we do with rap because wasn't rap he likes on one the- recently where he was like pounding the table for Lamar was that the same guy yes well yeah. he was pounding the table for Lamar in the context of anything but Kirk okay so yeah yeah, yeah. he's uh, I I, yes, I don't, he, I don't he came through on your channel. I don't know why. I don't know, Rap. I did not block you, dude. I swear. But anyway, Purple Pocket Podcast, if you don't already subscribe, hit. I mean, most of Purple Gang is up in here. But if by chance a couple of you know, people are uh, watching in on your channel there, uh, Purple Pocket Podcast is who we're talking about here. Uh, he's one of my inspirers. But it's one of those. He's like me. He's ready to move off of Kirk. If my only two choices were Kirk or Lamar for three years, I'm taking Lamar. I mean, yeah. I think the idea was 
he was fighting this the same dumb notion that well if we got Lamar Justin Jefferson's not going to be happy and he's going to want to leave because Lamar's not going to be like Kirk Cousins is the only person that can throw Justin Jefferson the ball that's that's I think is where we uh well, yes. Can I Thank throw you. one last thing yes. out here with yeah. the Lamar Jackson stuff? Exactly. At least in my opinion, for what I got around, yeah. no, he, he likes him because he won the MVP and he thinks he's a really good player. And yeah. I, I like Lamar Jackson too. With me, you know this, Justin. We, I'm not going to kill a dead horse here. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but it, it came down to the price point. It's just not going to be worth giving up what you're going to have to give up. Because no, here's I, the thing, I, right? I, We're talking I, about three ones, right? We're talking about three ones to get our guy who's cheap. You have to give him two wins as of now without renegotiating with Baltimore and then paying them up. No thanks for that. Absolutely not. No, I, t- I agree. I, again, for me, the conversation is done at this particular point in time. Yeah, yeah that's uh, – that's that's too evil to hope. That's that that that's his spiel. He loves he, he, he <laughs> yeah. loves getting. He I loves love getting how much he going. references he loves Zimmer. Mike going, but yeah, I, that that's that's Your why new quarterbacks speak. coach Mike Zimmer. Yes, for yes, yeah. Vikings. I hope so. I hope so, man. That would be brilliant. Yeah. Kirk Cousins would love it, wouldn't yeah. he? He'd love it. <laughs> I thought they were gonna fight that one day on the sideline. I was like, oh, you know, I know. Real funny. This I don't know. Hey, did you guys see the uh, the last game of the season with the Timberwolves when those two guys got into it a little? Oh, Rudy. Yeah, yeah I seen it. Rudy. Okay, so I I cut up a little short of you know Rudy and Anderson getting into it, and it cut right over to Zimmer and Cousins getting into it, and I got the the background check. Why can't we be friends? <laughs> yes. Oh. Sorry, that was that, that was one of my better works. You know, you're completely plagiarizing other people's work, but that's beside the point. Well, having said that, any final topics before we hit the Bob? I'm gonna I, I'm putting out the bad signal for you, Bob, because I told Bob you'll get to be the <laughs> one to say it uh, because he just loves doing the mocks there. So uh, I'll just say, get it ready, Bob, and I'll tell you when to send it. But in all seriousness, uh, thanks, Mary. I appreciate it. Uh, any other topics you guys want to hit up real quick before we get to the uh, main event here? No, I'm just laughing at Purple and Gold Media. So let's insult Kirk and invite him on the show. I wouldn't ask him a single football question. I'm telling you, if I ever got a chance, I would it would bomb or it would get the most hate and most views because it's stupid. I'd be like, what's your favorite TV show? Yeah. What's your go-to like pregame meal? Like I would ask him zero about how is Mike. I think he'd food. like that, honestly. Absolutely he would. And who cares? Yeah. What's that what's yeah. the underrated TV show you'll die on a hill for? I, right. that's what I want to do. Right. <laughs> ah, G Max in the house. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. It must mean uh, Hopefully we get a couple more because I know Rhino was going uh, was going over there too. So thanks kindly for joining. If you don't already subscribe, check out my uh, Purple Pocket. Excuse me, Purple People Podcast. That's our guest Kyle's uh, channel. See, that's the fun thing when you and Rap in the building. We got Purple Pocket Podcast and Purple People Podcast. You got the double triple P. And at the end of the day, it's one of those deals where holy cow, I better get this right here. What's your favorite hamburger place? Love that one. Uh, <laughs> what music does he listen to to get hype? Well, we already know. Who's the, who are those guys that he had for uh, his wedding or whatever? I, I digress. I have no idea. I'm not a certain uh, Kirk Cousins supporter. I have no idea about right. questions like that. All right. I put out the bad thing. Yeah, what's my creed? Thank you, Dylan. Thank yes. you. Uh, I, see, I wasn't totally Wait, crazy. Oh, Nobody knew wow, I was talking oh, about. <laughs> That's a lot of things. Yes, it is. <laughs> you got to get your chin pronounced, and when you do that for Kirk, when he comes out. No kidding. All right, let me see if I can get this new setup configuration that we had spent so much time. All right, now everybody out in the chat, I, I, I tried to do this this reconstruction of these windows here as best I could here. So let me know if that is visible, and if not, then we'll just take our pictures off of the of the stream for a while to get that up there. But I got you, Dave. That look good. Yeah, uh, no, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Dylan. I appreciate you. I will die on the Creed Hill. I jam them monthly. Yeah, yeah. I love them. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I digress. Draft cr- screen a little small. All right, let me see if I can adjust this to make this bigger. Yeah, and- Justin, I'm not. I'm not telling you how you should, but that one where we're all on the side and it's bigger and i can see it better that way i can you know sort what? of see it this way but let's just all right let's just do that uh, let's, let's do that one if you don't care no it doesn't bother me one bit is that is that better somebody in the chat give me uh at least it's not nickelback <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh that's what all right in the chat give me a yes or no give me two or three people in the chat tell me if that looks good for you guys uh, on the screen there before i uh, yes all right thank you mary all right so now i just need to get back over here crazy horses <laughs> Exactly, exactly. All right. So 
I'm going to turn this down to about medium. That way we can jump in whatever we want. So should, is either one of you guys used this, uh, this, bo this board here before? Where, well, I what? used to before they put a pay window on it, but I have an idea. Yeah. So what, what, should, what should I be using for these, uh, for these, how this is simulated? Should they be about 50, 50 each way? Or what do you think? Something like that seems fine. Yeah. That, that seems fine. All right. Okay. And we're going to select the Vikings. Make sure you click three. Oh, yes. We'll do three rounds. Good point. Enter the draft. Okay, so Carolina is on the clock. We haven't started. Now, can you only trade with a team when they are on the clock? Yeah, no, no. You could do it beforehand. You can do it before. Oh, yes, as long as it's not active. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'll go, by, it'll go by fast if you do it that way. Okay. So it's best to do before. Um, if not, you'll have to click stop, and hopefully they haven't picked yet. But Yeah, mm -hmm. I put it on relatively slow to give us enough time to start in. So we're, we'll just start. We know we're not trading up to get Carolina. Uh, they took C.J. Stroud right off the bat. Any surprises with that, gentlemen? It's, Mike? it's not ideal. It's not ideal but because <laughs> I feel like Young's coming off next, but that's okay. All right. Let's go to the next one here. And do-do-do-do. Bryce Young. So – all right, we'll go through the draft without trading up to three the first time, and we'll do it the second time, and then we'll get some uh, fan involvement here as well. You're going to have to help me with the chats too, by the way, because I can't see uh, the chat and the uh, the big board simultaneously here. So, so Jeff, we're just going to let we're just going to let this. I'm sorry. Is, it'll tell you if you haven't used it yet. If they're on the clock, they'll pick. Mm -hmm. Okay, they picked uh, Tyree Wilson at edge. Anthony there Richardson, Anthony at Richardson four. pick. Jalen Carter. That would be scary in Seattle. Yeah, very much would be. I'm going to pause it for a second. That's the slowest setting. All right, fine. Yeah. All right, so we got six picks in. We got Stroud. We got Young. Know, we got uh, Wilson, Richardson, Carter, and Lucas Van Ness. Is this the part where we make a trade for Will Levis, gentlemen? Uh, my vote is no. No. Right. No, I, like I said, I, I wouldn't trade for him or Richardson, honestly. There we go. Guys in the chat, you know what we're going to say here. If we let it fall how it does, which is what it looks like we're doing, right. let's see what I'm see what player is there, first of all, at 23, mm -hmm. but I'm going to see trade offers because someone's going to offer you a trade there. Right. Yeah. All right, so let's just, just recap here. So we got Will Levis, then we got Will Anderson, then we got Paris Johnson, tackle from Ohio State, another tackle. So we have a couple tackles off the board right off the bat. Will here. Anderson at nine. Goodness. Will yeah, think about that. That's that's a steal for Chicago to be able to trade all the way. Yeah, that won't happen. And still get Will Anderson there. But um, any moves to make here now, or let it run for a couple, two, three. I'm all good. Right, we'll let it run. What about you? I, I let it go all the way. Honestly, I, that's just away. me though. All right, Devon, Devon Witherspoon, Quentin Johnson at 13. Okay, another wide receiver. Yeah. Aaron Interesting that they Wilson. had Jackson go before Injigba there, but Gonzalez. Gonzalez at 15 would be something to look at, but you don't yeah. want to trade up for a corner. We've already yeah. said you don't want to do that. We've done that. We, we've we taken enough corners in my lifetime, Kyle, to not trade yeah. up for one. Yeah. <laughs> ah, it was part of me that was hoping Seahawks for Seahawks got corner. really good in this simulation. Yeah, really yeah, good, yeah, really yeah, fast. Yeah. Jalen Carter and Joey Porter. All righty. So. We have reached the uh, 23rd pick here, the last few picks here. Nolan Smith, you know, Lions getting Nolan Smith's not bad either. And I was kind of hoping for Joey Porter to fall, mm -hmm. but nevertheless. Okay, so we got some trade offers here. Let's see what we got going on. You guys are going to have to help direct. I don't know exactly how this works. So the Rams are. So think about it the way you would if you were offering for this pick from wherever they are. You're, they're going to get hours. Um, you can if, get. You know, if you're wondering, get, just click that that little thing just to where the uh, Rams are, and then you can find out all the teams that are offering. The little uh, the bar there. Yeah, if you click that, it will show you all the teams that are offering. So in that selection no. with the Rams, you get. No, no, where where, the, where it says LA Rams. If you click, click underneath there, yeah, click that, then it'll show you. This right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, it should show. Oh, all right. I get it now. There you go. Yeah. So Detroit. So both of these situations, we're not going to get a first round pick. So you don't get a fifth year. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the chat feels about that. I'm not too big of a fan of that. I'd like to still pick in the first round. What? Seriously? Am I missing yeah, something? Need... No, no. This happens sometimes. You don't. Get... Sometimes you don't get a good offer. 
for the. So what uh, is the? All right, so help me understand. It, 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 what it, what is being offered here? Not, to us? Nothing, to but the Rams. The only teams interested are the Rams, Bucks, and Lions. Whatever Browns, but not whatever teams popped up. An offer, no, they just show oh. they show that they were the teams that would actually want to trade with you. You oh, could try right. other teams though. No, you could I try that. Care. I was thinking that they were making offers to us. I'm like, no, no, no. In right, so the same way, Justin, if you if you yeah. decided to pick one of those, you would do the compensation is what you think is fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Right, right so now, yeah. as we talk, I would say uh, Kansi is a steal there because he's ranked 13 and the Vikings need the help. That's yeah. assuming that everybody wants to do it this way in this draft. Mm -hmm. As you guys know in the draft, sorry, I'm taking over for a little bit, but we're letting this run down. This isn't the only one we're going to do. We're going to do multiple scenarios. So. Yes, we'll do a few. We'll Can I ask you a question, that. Justin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Bajan Robinson come off the board? Nope, he's right there. Because, uh -oh. no, again, uh -oh. I know uh -oh. PFF's a little bit different with the way, but a realistic, honestly, a realistic scenario I could see happening is if we tried to trade with the Bills, I bet you they'd be willing to go up four spots to take Robinson. I know, obviously, there's a little bit of bias there for me and the, the Bills, but that, that would be an idea. All right, now I finally yeah, found Now, my, here's my counter to that, Mike. They just drafted Cook last year. You still think they would? I know Rob. Yeah, the, I think right they there. would. I, I, I generally think they still there. would because I think they are so done with having Josh Allen play hero ball. Mm -hmm. They want to hammer out this running back situation. They brought in Damian Harris at free agency. They brought in former Viking. I'm not kidding, Justin. Latavius Murray in a visit. I think they want to have mm – -hmm. A running back that can help Josh Allen so he doesn't have to run for 700 yards in the season anymore. You know who else is just talking to me in my telepathic mind here? Saints need a running back too because I don't know what the heck's going to happen with Alvin Kamara and he's getting older. You uh -huh. could trade. You could you could also try to trade with them if you really wanted to. But I'm looking at here at the ranks for these. So are these guys worthy of the 23rd overall? I think Zay Flowers is. And I'm on NFL Draft Buzz. Uh, Zay Flowers is the fifth overall ranked. Uh, Jordan Addison at four. Jalen Hyatt, they've already gone. Zay Flowers and Josh Downs, both right there. I don't know. Heard some good things about Zay Flowers. What do you guys think if you got had to pick it I was going to say, who's, who Clancy? said anything in the chat? Oh, what's Clancy? up, Rhino? Good to see you. I'll check out your show when I'm down here. Thanks for bringing some of the people over here. I saw a few that came on over, so thank you for that. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so wide receivers, Flowers is there, Addison is there. You Those are probably Clancy, the only who had the third, thirteen overall grade. If you want to boot, boost up the line, yeah. I so... like, I like, I like Cansey. I think he's he's a fun prospect. If you wanted to just stick and pick. Mm -hmm. All right, so should we offer a trade to Buffalo, or should we try to uh, should we take one of the three players that we just mentioned here between? Uh... I can't well, let's see, see it. If they take it, we're good. But if they can, they can also reject the trade. I, right. I would. I'd see what Bill, the Bills would be willing to do. I, I'd right. see. All right. Let's see what Buffalo's. So we're gonna give them twenty three for twenty seven, and what else? Uh, we Throw in their third. What do you guys think? Throw in their third. I try to be yeah, realistic right. with these things. Yeah, That's yeah. what I think. See, and it'll say right here where you see that uh, Justin will say they are not interested for the yeah. pick. Yeah. They would obviously swap for nothing, but try right there for us. But try ninety one. See what they say. Try ninety one. Am I missing something? No, it would turn the bar would turn green. Doesn't look good. They don't I even guess want to trade just, up, huh? No, I guess not. Well, this is what kind of got, if, oh, go ahead, Justin. <laughs> this is kind of silly that if we offered our first and second for, to move back, that it wouldn't take. That's money. the problem with PFF. Sometimes that happens. Right. Like I said, when teams are interested, it's weird. They oh, when teams right. aren't interested, they they won't do it. All right. Well, let's just stick and pick here. So we got Clancy, and then we got the the two wide receivers. Uh, put it in the chat here. Zay Flowers, Jordan Addison, Clancy, or wild card. And if it's a wild card, tell me who it would be because I don't see going past any one of those two wide receivers. Any other positions we should look at here? We do I have mean, safety in the chat. Brian Branch is a stud. Yeah. Um, that could be the Harrison Smith replacement. The problem is mm -hmm. who's going to go in right now? It would be uh, Cam Bynum. And then you have Seen and Branch on the bench. So I don't know how much I like that. But that would be a great rotation for safeties. Um What's the chat thing? What do you what are you guys overall feeling on that? Let's see what they got. I think the value is Cancy, but that's just me. It it depends what we want, guys, because Branch can play in the slot as well. Mm -hmm. Um but to me, Justin knows this from talking to me a million times over, but I don't want to take a slot guy in, in the first row. And that's where his his primarily impact would be right away, because we're not gonna start him at safety. I mean, not with Harry and Cena on the roster, so 
I, I'd go Cansey or or Zay Flowers, but that's me. Well, I got a Cansey in the chat. I got a Branch, but I like Cansey as well. So we got you know one and a half there. Uh, Mozzie Smith, Robinson, go Flowers. Or just, so of course you know there's no consensus here. They like Flowers, like Flowers. So oh, I'm up to three Flowers now. I'm up to two Addisons, three Addisons. Here's your Addison uh, type for whoever tagged in the chat. He's an outstanding prospect who's a prototypical slot player with mm -hmm. reckless yes. speed. Fun fact about uh, Jordan Addison, he played with mm -hmm. uh, Kenny Pickett at University of Pittsburgh before oh, transferring yeah. out to USC. So Pittsburgh could even take him before at this point in the he real draft. He's a smaller guy. I'm looking at it now, 5'11", 173. So he is very light. But that doesn't mean much with the guys like Waddle and uh, Devontae Smith killing it in the league right now that's true. that's a good point that's very very true i, I like think. addison i if you guys want to do that too like i'm, I'm open a receiver would be my preference though he is and uh, so I'm, I'm just on a regular website looking at this but the power rankings for wide receivers in the draft he is four um and he is behind johnson uh smith and jigba and hyatt so if you have addison flowers and downs he's still available if addison is down that's who they have right above him and these guys are very close together so it just depends on what and they're all about the same size, same 40 time. Yeah. So All right, so I'm going to leave it up to the chat. I'm narrowing it down to the two wide receivers here. So Addison or Flowers, we'll take 30 seconds, get them in the chats. Tell me what you think here, gentlemen. Uh, Insert the Jeopardy music. Yes. You know, I should have thought of that. Why, <laughs> why didn't I think of that? It's beyond me, but there you go. All right. Flowers is more of a speedster, so I got – all right, so Addison and Flowers and Flowers. All right, it's two to one. We got 15 seconds left. You want to get your vote in make it count because in 10 seconds I'm stopping the count. Anyway, all right. All right, Zay Flowers it is. Super exciting deep threat jitterbug. Yes. Speed go. acceleration and overall something here. Zay Flowers is in. That's exciting. You got your Adam Thielen replacement right there. There you go. And I'll be honest, probably a more an electric player at this point in his career than what Thielen was last year. Ooh, t Cowboys take B. John Robinson. All right. They want him. I don't know if you heard about that room. No, if man. they go and get rid of Zeke this offseason, who was yeah, a first round running back, take yeah. another one. That would be funny. That would be a, that would be such a charity. Him and Pollard man. together. I mean, Zach, uh, Dak wouldn't have to do anything. Yes, Dak, Dak has it pretty good in Dallas, I'm not going to lie. Aside from the fans being rude, but that's nothing new with that fan. How far do you want me to let this drop before I stop it and maybe think about trading in here, gentlemen? We're up to pick 37 as of now. Oh, we'd have to – I'd let it go at least till pick 50. I mean, we're going to have to give so much okay. to move up. That's just me, though. Josh Downs. Any Anyone in particular – you'd like to get Justin that, that for trading up for anyone in particular that, you know, prospect um, or position, you know what? I'm going to stop it after a couple more picks and we'll just see where. No, God dang it. I was just going to say, let me stop it here and see if John Michael Smith is still there. <laughs> this is why you that's don't how leave... dude, it always happens that way. And that's why you time. don't leave me in control of this stuff here. But all right, here, where's the, is there a way to get back to the big board to see who's available or. At this particular point, or uh, I think there's a drop window, isn't there? I believe there there should be, from what I can remember. I'm not sure. We're not. I thought picking. there was a drop window. We're not picking, so I'm not sure. Oh, this also is yeah. If you're slow, not picking, yeah. If you're slide. not picking, I don't think I'll show you. All right, I'm gonna I can't remember. I'm going to speed it up a little bit here. Let's just uh, let's just run a few more. All right, I'm going to stop it there because I'm going to trade ahead of Detroit. Run before the pick we were supposed to have before we traded it for TJ Hawkinson just for the sake of trolling. All right, put it in the chat here, anybody. What uh, what should be our next uh, next way to go here? Uh, everybody went flowers. Everybody went flowers. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. You know what? To heck with it. I should have prepared a little bit better. I should have run a few simulations myself, but that's all right. We'll just run it. We'll just run it until we get to our last pick. And then we'll do I mean, do you more. want to try? I was going to say, do you want to try to trade to new Hunter, but too late for that? Yeah. Now we got 10 more picks, but I sped it up here. So we'll see who's available. And then we'll, uh, we'll leave it up to the chat to make a pick here for us, and we'll see who's available. Okay. So this is where you guys are going to have to start helping me because my knowledge Ooh. is about first round and a half and that's about it but you want to go oh is there a trade offer is that what that is 
Yeah, that's a trade offer. Yeah, you would go down, but you won't, you'd have to make it yourself. But that is that does mean there's a team oh, interested right. in the Raiders. I don't know why the heck it does that. All right, so let's see who's it. Uh, how about your guy Stenson Bennett there, Mike? I'm just kidding. I'm not that high on him, Justin. Not, not, not that high. <laughs> Uh, no, we already took a wide receiver. I, I don't know. I was that. Th there's a prospect that I do like here. That's there, Saki Ika, the uh, kid out of Baylor. He's it's a tackle. Right. That would be a lot of fun. Defensive tackle. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, that's that that that's one to consider. What are you thinking? Uh, Kyle? Yeah, my my immediate knee jerk is but probably what you guys see in the chat. We just took offense. I'm looking at defense. I'm looking at D line. I'm looking at corner. I'm looking at linebacker too. If the value's there, but. Oh, yeah, who's available at corner and linebacker? That's a good point. All right, let's take a look. The good thing about Riley Moss, PFF is we brought Riley in. Moss the guy yeah, that, you know, I've heard East Coast talk about. The good thing about PFS, they'll give you the ranking of where they might go, the average yeah. there. Yeah. Um, yeah. The kid out of Stanford, I've heard good things about too. Blue, Blue Kelly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you Somebody said you want wanted... Ojomo still there. Eh, the Noah Sewell's good. I've heard good things about Noah Sewell. You could get him in the third. This is the third. But I like him, yes. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Um, what other position? There was one more you'd said uh, that you wanted me to look at here. I'm sorry. Oh, we were uh, looking uh, either D-line. We did linebacker, D -line. D corner. Yeah. That's right, D-line. All righty. So I like I like your uh, the Baylor guy. I'm not even going to try and say his name. Let's just uh, <laughs> and so you have an edge rusher up there, and you have an interior based on the the value because yeah. they are ahead there at 58 and 63. We're at 87, so you get good value. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is just a random stat, but uh, Ika played at LSU at one point, and I've liked when we've drafted LSU uh, Tigers in the past, so I would not be opposed. Yeah, there you go. There nice. you go. Who was the other guy? It was a linebacker. Who did we just say a minute ago? So we got Ike Ooh, is on we the get in the third for sure. Uh, oh, we were in the third. My bad. I, yeah. I forgot we're. Uh, yeah, Noah Sewell. Noah Sewell. All right. So Noah Sewell from Oregon or the defensive lineman that we just had there a moment ago. Uh, Saki, Ike. Saki Ike. Which those are our two choices, ladies. So put it in the chat. Uh, in fact, just say linebacker or say D lineman because I'm not going to be uh, able to keep track of all of this. Where is Devin Overshone? Um, that's uh, I believe that's the defense of tackle from it's either a tackle or a linebacker from Texas. Let me see if he already went. Not seeing him on here, so I'm guessing he went when we uh, when we sped through this whole thing. Oh, he went two picks ahead of us. There it is. You gotta be kidding me. He goes around this range all the time when I used to. All right, do you guys chat. You guys chat for a second. I'm gonna tap out for just about. I'm just gonna tap out for just a second here. Hold up. I'm going so, with masses here. Uh, kid from Baylor. I like that a lot. Not that an edge wouldn't be bad, but we in this scenario, guys, we don't know the Hunter and the Smith scenario of what the situation is going to be. So I would always take Henry D line help because it seems like ever since 2020 we can't stop the run for anything. So I'm okay with that. Um, I will. I, I will do more homework on this kid from Wisconsin, though. If he's still sitting there, thirty picks later, it's not terrible. I, if I, I had was, been paying attention, I would have been like, "Oh wait, Overshone is almost there. Let's just let's just try and trade up and get him." That that kind of irritates me that he went two picks before because I was I actually like that guy. I've heard about him a little bit anyway. Um, all right, so what's the consensus? Which way are we going here to wrap this uh, mock one? I, I go. I I'd go with uh, Kyle. I'd go with Ika. Ika. Yeah. All right. There we go. And then let's it'll give what, us a grade. When let's we're see what done. our grade is. I'd say it's a B plus or an A minus. I would agree. Thank you, PFF. Hire me for your local football team. Ooh, look at that! A minus and A plus. Love that. You were selling us short. We got an A out of this mother. All right, let's do this again here. And in all seriousness, uh, let's turn the speed down just a little bit. Um, uh, Let's take some of the randomness down. Uh, hey, I appreciate gonna... all you guys while Justin's doing this to fill a little bit. I appreciate you guys uh, letting me come on again, and I appreciate Absolutely. you guys for showing my channel love. Um, 
don't do a lot of plugging and all that stuff here. It's just a fun. This is the fun part of Viking social media because I just met these guys this year and you guys have taken me in. So I appreciate it. And like you said earlier, I will definitely come back and you guys definitely can come on our show. Maybe after post draft buzz, maybe after we sign Rock Yasin because I'm putting yes. the universe. That'd be awesome. All right. So. In all seriousness, I, I know I would love to do that. I was so. going to say, why would why would the Cardinals trade for Cousins when they have Kyler Murray? <laughs> Who the heck knows? Um, what player are we trying? Are we? I'd go with Daniel. Daniel. If we're going to Daniel, yeah. yeah. So according to this, Ooh. according to this, you're getting Anthony Richardson, man. It's well, happening. theoretically. No, I'm kidding. I'm not giving rid of our 2025, but all right. So according to this, it would take the Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! I would be in that's interesting. One and two, and you still let's keep in 23. So here's the deal. That's the 24 mm. first, 25 first, 24 second, and 23 second. And Daniel Justin Hunter. Day is over here. Kevin Costner and his way into the draft right now, draft day. I love this so much. <laughs> We doing it? Yeah, I do that. The thing <laughs> is, I will say we got to be careful because, well, I mean, if you guys want Richardson, then we could just do it. Uh, if I'm if I'm outvoted, that's that has fine. a seventy two percent chance. I would try that and see what they say. Or you could throw in like a late round in one of the later ones too, like a four or five, and see. This is ninety two percent. So for two first round picks and a third in Daniel Hunter, but not this year's first. Yes. This is. No, no. We go back to that. No. Well. Richardson went off the board. Is he at Bryce Young? That's not going to happen, but I would love Bryce Young at three. Yeah, let's do Bryce Young. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> Man. That works. Speed I, dial. If that, if that happens in real life, I, I'd be in shock at this point. Oh, All right. Do I need to future, ask? Boys? No, do we I run in ask? the card. <laughs> do I need Mike to ask? Setzer says, take trade right now. <laughs> Dylan, I appreciate you. He said I had him at Alger Robinson. See? I'm telling you. He's from the cloth, too. And we keep the 23 in this one? Yeah, we kept the 23. All right, so let's just recap here. Despite the fact that I accidentally pushed the wrong button, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, this is exactly what happened when me and Rap did this. Uh, But we'll take Bryce Young, then Will Levis, so quarterbacks one through four, Jalen Carter, Christian Gonzalez, Will Anderson didn't quite make it to the Bears this time, but uh, tackle from Northwestern. Jackson Smith in the jig play at number nine. That's that's interesting, but okay. I don't like the Bears getting better right there. That annoys me. That 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 that's good for them. So, yeah, that that's the uh, Ohio State connection. They got the, because Fields, Fields. played with oh, yep. the jig play. All right, uh, we gonna try and trade up with Houston, or are we just gonna let it roll to us? This is just my opinion. I'll let Kyle go after. I think we should trade down, guys. I think we could pick up a, a lot of assets now. It's something to think about. Yep. All right. Let's see who's on. on the board at twenty three, like Viking censored said. But yeah, let's let's see who's on the board, and then because if you walk out of there with two nailed first round picks, man, Clancy or Clancy's oh. there. Oh man. Jordan Addison went right. Sorry, let's let's go through it here and see who uh, went. So uh, Johnston is gone. Jones, um, Van S, Joy Porter, Smith. Dante Banks, Paris Johnson, Miles Murphy, Bijan Robinson, Brian Bijan Branch, and Jordan T-Bot. Addison. Ooh. So wait a second. Zay Flowers is still there. We'll get back to that one. Clint Cancy is there. Uh, I didn't see where Cancy went in the other round. I should have paid attention to that. Yeah, uh, uh, we, I was a little all over the place there. Uh, let's see whose cornerbacks are available there. Anybody of interest? Not. I would, you know what I would do here if, if we don't take Cancy, you trade yeah. back and you target Cam Smith. He's valued at 39. I'd go right inside the second round and try to go for him. I would trade down too. A guy I like, linebacker Drew Sanders out of Arkansas. Linebacker. If he's still on the board. <laughs> Vikings uncensored. I would too, man. <laughs> oh, man. Seeing some take Cancy, see some Drew uh, Sanders in the chat. So, just out of curiosity, because I'm greedy, <laughs> y'all wouldn't take Zay Flowers. I'm not saying I wouldn't. I just don't, I don't know what the Vikings would do. It'd be so questy to trade up and then trade down the same draft. It I would mean, be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. it would be. All right, so let's see if we can find. A... Ooh, that's not bad. It's the Giants. Could only Giants. we only have to go down two spots. See if we can pick up their you. third or something. Daniel Jones, I hate you so much. <laughs> 
Oh, let's see. They don't need a running back. I was going to say we trade him Dalvin Cook. <laughs> yeah. We could try it, Justin. Is it eighty? Was it eighty nine? See if they take it. You can try it. So if sometimes I offer it, the trade and they reject it. Correct. You no still you could do it again. You could change it up. There you go. All right. So we just snagged the Giants third to move back two spots. So let's just roll our roll the beautiful bean footage. Um, and none of the players that we were talking about taking went. Um, so let's see what we man. got for trade offers here. The Saints. No, I, I ain't trying to trade out of the first one. Let's see what they – so. Would you go 115 maybe? But it's a risk. <laughs> I love it, man. You might, all they can do is say no. Yeah, all right. Stop goofing around, Justin. Stop goofing around. Okay, so they want to move up from 29 to get 25. I want their 40, so yeah, that ain't going to happen, and I'm not giving up. A, well, let's they were going to give you 115, or maybe see if they'll give 71. Yeah, I, 71 only has a 27% chance, so we'd have to throw – if they're in 211, I wouldn't really care. That's just me. Yeah, that's not moving the needle enough. Hmm. What do you guys say to that? It's up to you guys. What do you say to that, Kyle? Oh, man. That's your fifths there? That you, is. That is one of your thirds? No, no, no. That, that is, fourth that, and fifth, no? That is, I'm sorry. Oh, we get 71 back. Yeah, we get 71. So we would get. All right, let's be reckless. Let's do it. Let's do this. <laughs> Yes! Brilliant! And, all of right. course, all right, there's my dream being dead of Zay Flowers. All right, so <laughs> can't see is a possibility. Who are those DBs? Is Addison liked? still on board, though? Huh? Addison? The receiver, Addison? No, Addison, Addison, Addison went right before, our uh, first, right before us in the first place. Otherwise, I would I wouldn't, I wouldn't, would have really pushed hard for that. All right, so Cam Smith is still available. Uh, the, that's the guys you point Take out. Take Cansey. Take him. Mike, can't see yours. Which one? Anything that's not a corner, I'm good with. So let's do that. Can't see right now. <laughs> and then you get 71 um, and uh, 89. I at the end of the round here. So, um, so you're we right, still so purple and skull. They would they would be ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that? Oh, uh, purple and skull said the Bengals' offense would be ridiculous. Oh. And. Uh, mm -hmm. Skull Mafia says we need an all-pro guard to help protect the future. We can see what interior <laughs> line grades are around 70 to 89. All right, sure so those guys would be there. just so that we – Why don't we trade Kirk? Where? Mm, I don't know. What, what are you guys feeling? Is well, there a team that – I mean, we're in the second round still, right? We, yes, we at the so, start of the second round. We haven't done anything in the second round. Uh, point. I, I've thought about this, and Justin, I made you laugh when I said this last time, so I'll say it on live now. So I'm not, you know, trying to just say one thing off air or another thing on. Kirk's a bit of a mercenary. Why don't we try the Colts? Did the Colts take quarterback? Yeah, they took Will Levis. They took uh, Levis. They took yeah. Will Levis. Uh, I don't know then. Let's go through the second round and see who's up there, and we'll see which one definitely would. How about the Jets? We could try the Jets. In theory, they haven't acquired Rodgers yet. I mean, throw it out there. Right. They have two second rounders. I know that for a fact. All right. There you go. New York Jets. We're looking for two second round picks. <laughs> I love the, the uh, aggressiveness. 80% <laughs> chance. Man. Woo. Well, we said this earlier. If you guys weren't listening, you forgot. If Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud comes to the team, they're starting. So that's the reason for trading Kirk right now. Um, I didn't think of that. So we doing this? Oh we yeah, trying do. this. Let's do but it. Send him to where he should have went in free agency in 2018, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, this is this is so crazy and fun. Oh my, this is so this much fun. is fun. All right. So just so that I recap for myself. We now have the 42, the 71, and the 89. And we've gotten rid of Kirk Cousins and Daniil Hunter. Somebody send this to Questy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, if, it, if it promises Bryce Young, absolutely. So um, we, got, we got 10 picks to us. We want to roll these 10 
or do we want to try and see? You know, what, I, I'd be willing to take the chance because I think we could oh. get one of the linebackers, Jack Campbell or, right. or Drew I'll Sanders. Roll. I'll roll it. Well, that's right. I, I there goes it Cam Smith in yeah. Yeah. second and second round. Yeah. There goes your boy. Uh, is Campbell yeah. still on board? Jack Campbell out of Iowa. What position he play? A linebacker. Uh, do no. That'd be. I'm just saying. I think you could get him at 71. That's I was thinking the same thing. Going. I was thinking the same thing. Who's available right. at the all? Who's the overall best player available? There you so go. You edge from LSU. Weird. We just got rid of an edge. You just got LSU. rid of one. Let's get another one back in here. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's good what about, in the chat while we think about this. Somebody mentioned it earlier. They said uh, they think Patrick Jones will flourish under Brian Flores. Yeah, I, I could, yeah, we I talked could about see that it a little bit earlier. He's talked very good. Bit bottom earlier. Uh, <clears throat> well, what pick are we at? We're at Four, what is it, 42? Yeah, mm -hmm. one's our next one. I forget. 71. Yeah. We will, well, if you, if you want, Justin, if you really wanted to go full pie in the sky, I mean, John Michael Spitz is calling, you know, for us. Kyle, let's go. Garrett Bradbury, see ya. Goodbye. Earn your job. Earn your job, son. Uh, if you play bad in pass protection, you're going to eat the pine. There you go. All right, so we are now on. No, well, first off, we need to. We're not trading with the Bears, just on general. Yeah, I agreed. Right, agreed. So, all right, so now we've got. We're on pick fifty-four with the. Los Angeles Superchargers. Um, oh, that's right. You can't see who's available at the. All right, let's take a look and see at some names. Let's see if there's anybody that's gone that we liked before. Is it, did we miss out on anybody else that you guys? I think want? you're. I think you're uh, Overshown. I think might fall to us, but I'm I think sure. we should just take the chance. See if Overshow falls to seventy-one. That's what I do. All right, let's do it. It's gonna go right in front of us because that's <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> what it does. Jalen Hyatt was still there. Huh. All right. I could see him being a first round pick, which is crazy. Cause ah, uh, your guy went. All right, so we are now just six picks away. I think we, we let it ride. Let it ride. Let it ride. Okay. We're this with is, you, chat. We're looking for overshone. This Fingers is me saying there. we're within six picks. <laughs> I'm just curious, guys. I, I'm sorry. I, I've got to look. Yeah, no. I got to look. Gotta look. Work with it, man. See what happens. Yeah. Did you guys do that? Can you see if you could throw in 230? Was it 239 there? Try to be cheeky. Yeah, 239, their last one. 259? 259. Or is it 259? Yeah. Sorry, my screen's pretty small. Still a 73% chance. I'd try it. I wouldn't be opposed. I'd do that. It's a day three pick anyway. All right. There you go. Oh, look, Tanner McKee's available. <laughs> Let's do it, boys. <laughs> Two quarterbacks. Get rid of Nick Mullins, too. No. We'll do what the, the Washington team did a long time ago. We're taking two. Oh, yeah, when they took RG3 and Custom. Yes, there you go. <laughs> oh, Hooker went pick number 70. Yeah, there you go. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it goes far no, ahead of that. There goes Santa McKee. Who did he go to? Did you see? Uh, Doc got it. I was just going to stop for a dang thing, uh, but that's all right. Uh, Hendon Hooker went to the Raiders at pick 70, but we're going to take him at pick 23, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Mm -mm -mm. Thanks, everybody in the chat. I know that I haven't been uh, keeping up on that because I'm, I'm, I'm running this here. So, all right, so let's just get this last pick and get up out of here so that I can uh, get back into the chats here a little bit. Uh, I see a corner there. Up at the top, Garrett Williams. All right, not terrible. And value to 57, get him at 89, not terrible. This would be the responsible time to take a corner. I yes, can't lie. That's, uh, I was thinking, you know, but we, we got it. We got to take a corner. Got to take a corner. All right, for me, like what do you guys – here, push the button, Justin. So there you go. Oh, we uh, had all the 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 stats, and I saw a run grade and a coverage grade. Mm -hmm. Coverage is great, run not so much. Completion percentage, yeah, not terrible. 
I've heard good things from the kid about TCU. Matt Anderson put a tweet out about him recently from climbing the pocket. The kid from TCU. Yeah, Hodges yeah. Allison, let's see what he does. 5'8". Nah, that's not a Flores guy. <laughs> yeah, it's, you're not wrong. You're not that wrong. That ain't no Flores guy. 5'10", I think. Yeah, 5'10", maybe. He's got a better chance for sure. He played enough off zone in his career to get by, but he'll really shy in man coverage. Okay, good, there sounds you sounds go. That sounds like a Viking. Woods, it too. is. Guys, should we try to trade up for a receiver to end this? Go big or go home? Well, you got nine, eight picks left. Should we try to trade up for a wide out quickly before it ends? I think this is the end, isn't it? Well, it could we, oh, it's a good stop there. Do we have any picks? We could try something here. Trade 112 and 259 for uh, 102. Nah, they won't go for it. Throw in Delvin Cook, even though oh, there's no point. chance. That's gonna... Great point. <laughs> no, oh, San Francisco is totally right? not going to go for that. Yeah, but, uh... nah, but all right. Look, look. This is uh, really Mike does want Hendon Hooker at 23. Too evil, you're right. <laughs> hey, look at that. Are you serious? Only per PFF. I wish. Only in my dreams oh, would that be. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. That's not happening. They yeah. got CMC anyways, but this is fun. All right, let's. Just to see what receiver we could get, we could just play around with it just for fun. Well, who cares? We're not going past this round anyway, so let's just. Uh... Yeah, let's just do it. Have fun with it. Imagine CMC and Cook throwing the same backfield. Oh my God. Oh. Well, you know, be... Shanahan could find a way. He would use McCaffrey as a wide out. That's my honestly. That's honestly. My all right, let's take this. And all right, who? what position were we looking wide for? Wide out. All right. Trey Palmer. God, everybody on my show has just been pounding the table for Trey Is, Palmer. Uh, there's no way this kid uh, out of LSU, is it? I believe it's Boutte. I don't think he's still available, though, right? No way, right? Uh, at this point, no. I don't see I don't that. think so. He's the third one under these guys, so let's see who else is up there. Tyler Scott from Cincinnati. Jalen Reed. Hmm. Do you guys like any of these guys? I've heard good things about Palmer as well. The kid out of, was it Nebraska, I believe? One of my guys on my show is, is you got to do this. You got to do the tape on Trey Palmer. Seriously? All right, done. This was fun. This that was, was that was that was the draft. That, that's the draft I really want to watch. <laughs> the idea that we could trade up to three for two first rounds. I know. And Daniel Hunter, come on, guys. I know. A minus, baby. I would do. Yeah. Oh, Dalvin, it was nice knowing you. Kirk, see you by curb stomp. And Daniel, it was fun. <laughs> think about that. You get can't see Bryce Young. Got my guy, John Michael Schmidt. I, knew, and got the overshone guy. I'm, I, I'm totally correct. Yeah. I, I, I'm I totally had to make the joke about Cousins going to I'm where he totally should have went in 2018. I had to. Yes. All right. We know hey, you hate um, Kirk, Mike. It's fine. Yeah, I know. I'm a Kirk hater. I'm on the fence. So I'm a Kirk hater. Okay. That's how that works. Let's get out of there. Let's get out of there with that. Um, Gosh, that's so much fun. I know I mentioned you by name, but shout out, Rhino. Thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate you. I'll, like I said, after I get done with this, I'll uh, I'll have you on because we're going to be wrapping here just a couple of minutes because the wild game is about to start, and I'm going to go over and watch that. Um, if you don't already subscribe to Purple People Podcast, that is our guest, Kyle's uh, channel. Gee whiz. I think it might be time that I'm after doing an hour and a half or, or an hour and 15 earlier today and an hour and 40 today. I think I've reached my limit for one day, but um, go subscribe to Purple People Podcast. Purple People Podcast. Pretty please. Thank you kindly. Everybody hit the like button on the way out if you didn't hit it on the way in. Uh, shout out to a couple of other people that I know I've missed. Uh, Nick, if you're still here, thanks for joining us. I do appreciate it. Is that one of your guys? I don't know that I've seen Nick before, but. In either scenario, thank you kindly for uh, for joining us here this evening. Uh, Dan, I saw you earlier, and I don't know if I mentioned – or I saw you in uh, in the other show, so I didn't see you here. So if you're still here, thank you kindly for joining me as well. Uh, let's see, who else we got here? I'm sorry. I'm not going to throw up all the comments from when we were mocking because that would just kind of be pointless. But uh, what's up, Sarah? I know I said hi to you earlier as well. Do, 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 do. Am I missing anybody? I think that's it. 
Ronnie Bell, nice. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, special shout out. Yeah, Yogi, I was thinking of taking Riley Moss, but, you know, I, I just want to get up here. But thank you for Yogi who gave me the access code to uh, allow us to be able to uh, to utilize that here this evening. And if you don't follow Yogi on Twitter, <clears throat> check him out. This dude does mock drafts like two or three times a day. Somewhat, most of them are realistic and some of them are kind of fun. But also give Yogi a shout out. It's Yogi Howard and his Twitter handle. I'm going to pull it up here right now, Yogi. Hold on just a second. I don't have it memorized off the top of my head. That's Go Skull Media. That's G E A U X, as in like the LSU Go, as in Go Tigers. But Go Skull Media. Give him a follow on Twitter. Give him a shout. And again, thank you kindly for everybody joining us here. Skull Mafia, appreciate you hanging out with me here a couple times today here as well. Ah, Dan, you are still here. Great. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. I saw you over at First and Skull, but I didn't have a chance to say hello to you here. So thanks again for joining me here. So. Hit the share button. And again, one more time, just a reminder here, <clears throat> keep it tuned to Purple and Gold for days as well as the Purple and Skull Media family. We're Purple Pocket Podcast, GG Scold, Purple and Skull Media, Purple and Gold for days, and Purple Pocket Podcast will all be live streaming on night one of the NFL draft. Don't know exactly what time we're starting it off. We're going to start it a half an hour before the, the draft goes live or what the case may be. Uh, Kyle, if you're, I don't know if you guys are doing anything, but swing by into the chat and uh, I'll, I'll text you if you want to join us, if we hit a lull in there, if you want. Um, Jade is possibly going to join us as well, uh, but for sure we have Alexander Madison's dad coming on. There's a couple of, a couple of former Viking players that we're uh, working to get. I'm not going to say their names just in case, because uh, SK said, don't say the names until I have them confirmed, but Alexander Madison's dad will be one of our special guests there as well. With all that being said, everybody in the comments, hold on, what? Kyle dropped both Jarius Reich, Aldrich Robinson, and what, Adam? Let's get him back, school brother. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. Appreciate three, it. three, baby. Yes, there you go. No, um, is it, I'm going to talk to Kyle about this later uh, because he's got two others uh, on his show that he's got to schedule with. You know, it, we would love to do this, you know, every week if we could, but there's also lots of scheduling issues that get into that here, but we'll definitely have Kyle a couple times more in the off season and we'll figure out a way to incorporate uh, the other guys as well uh, on this and do some crossovers uh, during the season uh, as well there. So Mike, I've been rambling for the last two minutes, so you can ramble for a while here. Any last final thoughts here that you want to get up before we get up out of here? No, I, I, you know, I appreciate Justin having, you know, having me on. It was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed this. This was good. We traded everybody and uh, I'd love to see Vikings Twitter if we took Bryce Young and traded Kirk Cousins because oh. there'd be so much love and so much hate at the exact same time. You know what It'd it be would crazy. be, Mike? You remember the Simpsons movie when the, the rapture was happening and all the people from the church went to the bar and the bar went to the church? <laughs> all the people... All the people that hate Kirk will miss him, and all the people that love him will be like, get him out of here. Yeah. And that's exactly what we It'll be happen. bizarro world of all bizarro worlds. You're right. You know, and then I have to hear. Young, boys. We <laughs> and the one thing I want to throw out, my favorite thing that we would hear on Twitter if we did trade Kirk, which honestly I don't think it's going to happen anyway, but for fun, no, no. is like, how dare the Vikings do that? He was the best quarterback we've had since Dante Culpepper. But anyway, I had to get that in there. Sorry. Well, yeah, since Dante, he is. Absolutely. Yeah. He's not better than Fran Tarkington, yeah. though. So for any, And there are legitimately people out there that think he's already passed Fran Tarkington. That's nuts. That's, that's nuts. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Mike with the shattered a backboard dunk. Absolutely. In all seriousness, thank you kindly, everybody, for joining us. Hit the like button on the way out if you didn't. Hit the share button. Tweet it out for me. Uh, check out the live that I did with SK and Rap earlier today, as well as some of the video drops that we've had on all the channels across the Purple and Skull Media Network. But for now, life mission, one Super Bowl, just once before we die. Just once before we die. Thank you, Kylie. Skull Vikings. We'll see you on the flip side. Good night.